Durf Taff Pede starring people including the Scotty, the Paul, and the TJ. Low energy Welcome. intro. Wow, dude. Extremely low energy intro, TJ. I don't even... I'm going to do it low, lower energy? No. No, lower dude, energy? no, man. All right. No. All right, check it out. I can do High it. energy. I want, I want to amp it I up, TJ. Lower. Amp it up. Amp it up, dude. Uh-huh. I want excitement. Welcome to Deep Fat Fried. Wow. Scotty. Paul. Meh. Welcome to Deep Fat Fried. Trump versus Bush. Who is worse? Find out tonight on Deep Fat Fried. Meh. Meh. Find out now, TJ. Find out now. Don't you have some energy, TJ? Where's your energy at, buddy? Where'd you go? 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 What is this? A yawn? Well, what'd you do this weekend, TJ? We talked about my weekend before the show. What'd you do, buddy? I then went to the world-famous <laughs> French Quarter. <laughs> the Quarter of the French. <laughs> Would, perhaps witness the fire. Perhaps some spectacles. Some yeah, drunken. Some yeah. tomfoolery. Uh, yeah. Some mm. drunken, yeah. licentious behavior, perhaps? Meh. 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 Eat a good Meh. meal, perhaps, TJ? Meh. Sample some of the delicious cuisine the French Quarter is famous for. Uh-huh. It's disgusting. Yeah. We're picking your nose. Picking <coughs> your disgusting nose. You want schnoz. to be the star, TJ, so be the star, man. I threw it at Paul. Be a star, TJ. You fucking hit me with a booger. Hopefully it landed on you. And there's going to be an escalation. I'm going to hit you in the face with a wet turd. And then we'll see what you go from there. Yeah. A fucking wet turd. Go dude. shit in a cup and bring it in here and splash it in your face. Shit in a cup. You know what Paul, you need to do? <coughs> Fuck that, dude. Eat the most disgusting diet you can for like a week. Then you mean sh- like eat, eat like normal? <laughs> 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 All right, well, fair enough. Eat your normal diet. Shit in a fucking solo cup. Let it fucking fester for a couple well, weeks. Well, Paul's done had a milk jug Just go and shit dump earlier, it on TJ. According to Paul. Oh, yeah, dude. I had a, I had a, I had a nasty shit. He had a, he, had a milk shit? Ju- he had a milk jug shit, What dude. is that? You like know, like if you pour, if you turn a milk jug upside down, it goes. I'm getting the picture. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's just a bad poop, man. It was a, what was wrong? More How did fiber smell? in your diet, Paul. I don't, I don't, I didn't linger long enough to get a good. I wouldn't imagine. I just didn't imagine a shit like that would need <laughs> lingering. To well, smell. here's the thing, dude. I courtesy flush myself when I know I'm taking a uh, shit. Uh. So as soon as the shit hits the water, I hit the flush. <laughs> Okay. You know you gotta look at your poop sometimes, Paul. I'm not Good trying to you. smell my own shit. Well, I'm not about smelling it. It's about observing your own poop. Make sure your fucking colon's all in working order, dude. You gotta make sure. Well, I'll t- I take a look at it every once in a while. It's all fine. right. That's so, all you gotta do. I'm not, not talking every day. I'm not talking like TJ. I mean, TJ looks at the Mary is a turd. You know what I mean? So. Wow. <laughs> That's mean, Scotty. Why would you say that? I, I kid you, TJ. Why I love would you, you man. say that, Scotty? Uh, nothing but love from this end of the table. That's a TJ. mean thing to say. You're a bad person. I'm sorry. All right, so here is uh, our Trump versus Bush who is worse. Maybe I should explain why this is even happening. I'm just tired of uh, all these people acting like Trump is this unprecedented evil to descend on the presidency. It's like, has everyone forgotten the Bush years? And I'm also sick of people continuously elevating Bush above his station. Uh, And starting to talk about him as if he was actually a respectable fucking president when he was not. Compared to Trump, he was. What is that sack swinging down below Trump's neck? (laughs) Yeah, dude. Is that a cancerous sign or something? What is that? Is that a goiter? (laughs) I don't know. But uh, Rob Ford, who is our unit of measurement tonight. Don't speak ill of Rob Ford, TJ. Well, I'm just saying he seems to have quite a bit larger of one. No, he doesn't. He has a perfectly manly jawline. <laughs> Does he? Yes, look at Two him. Two of them, in Well, fact. he did. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, the CIA couldn't stand Rob Ford's greatness, so took him out. They took he him out. faked his own Is that what happened? Death. Oh, you think? Oh, obviously. Oh, he cancer, TJ. I'm sorry. He, uh, he got stomach cancer. He so faked Scotty, his own death. Wait, I'm hearing two different conspiracies here. Paul is saying he faked his own death. Yeah, he's living on a Caribbean island right and now. And Scotty is saying the CIA murdered him. You know, Paul, it's not like the running man. You know, some people win, dude. He, he, he had a first fucking class ticket to fucking death, dude. He's nope. dead. Rob Ford never CIA gets killed ca- him. caught up, dude. He smoked crack as a public official and got away with it. Yeah, I, I almost used a Game of Thrones as the measurement tonight for the bad things, just because of the uh, the shittiness of the, the recent That's not season. fair to the rest of the seasons of right. Game of Thrones. That so that's kind of what I was... Then I almost did Hitler, but Paul's like, you can't do the Godwin's Law thing. And then Paul said, Robert Ford, Rob Ford. Yeah. And I was like, you know, uh, I don't know. And then I looked up and I saw this picture of him and I'm like, yeah. 
I mean, look, dude, I like Rob Ford. I like that he was out there, and I think he was funny and great. But he's the perfect example of an inept politician, which makes him the perfect unit of measure for tonight's show, in my opinion. Absolutely. His ineptitude was so astounding that it circled back around and became awesome again. You know what I mean? And neither of these guys, I don't think, has <coughs> risen to that level of ineptitude. You, please tell me you pulled some fucking Rob Ford moments, dude. Mm, I did not. <laughs> dude, you got to find at least a couple, dude. It, I it, it, have to. One single Rob yeah, Ford moment. There's got to be at least one, dude. Like, <sighs> I mean... Okay. I'm not sure if you can get the crack smoking video, but... Whatever. Like, anything that, with dude, Rob Ford is an instant there's, call. I'll, uh, I'll there's find one. the shit where he ran forward at the fucking uh, city hall meeting and knocked some woman over and yeah. shit and was, like, arguing with the city council and shit. Yes. And the mayor of a city like Toronto, no less. I mean, like, a, a very super liberal... Probably one of the most liberal cities in North America. He didn't give a shit. He didn't give... A, Rob Ford didn't give he, a fuck. I don't know how he got elected there. I'm not sure how Canadian politics works up there and everything. I mean, I know they... Oh, here's funniest moments. Yeah, this is literally 24 minutes long, so. Look, the people loved him. He, yeah, dude, he's a man. Everybody loved Rob He was Ford. out smoking big old fat crack rocks. The people loved him. Look at him. Look what he did. The football team a loved true him here. hero. Oh, wow. Dude, Rob Ford's like the super successful real-life Tommy boy, dude. Or he was. Look at him. Look at him. They're getting so rowdy. I think they get- fucking love him. They don't dump the Gatorade on you unless they love you. Of course they fucking love him. It's Rob Ford. Dude, you don't get the Gatorade shower unless the people love you. John, John, the bottom line what is, is true. what you're saying what now said, or what you're saying then? Pam the McConnell right and, and John Fillion. See? Oh, sure. Walk away. It's the easiest way. Yeah, what a pussy Pam? bitch of a reporter. Uh, How's this? What, what I said. Okay. Answer the question. Right. You just call right. him a fat fuck. Yeah. Answer why do you say that? Why do you say that? Well, you did. You just call him a fat fuck. You did. You did. You said that. You did that. That's right, you said you okay? What did you say? What's what did you just say? You called him a you fat fuck. You called me a fat Why fuck right now. You did. Fuck. You just did. I mean, in fuck. all fairness. Oh, my God. He is a fat you fuck. You are indeed a fat fuck. Yeah, so. but, well, but he is accusing Rob Ford of lowering <laughs> the tone, and he just true. called him a fat fuck. Are you going to lie about that? Are you going to lie about that? You said that. You just called him a fat fuck. You just called him a fat fuck. Oh, he's seen himself I got to go. Wow. <laughs> it really is like Tommy Boy got elected yep. office, dude. He's great. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shnikes! Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, she wins! <laughs> god! Oh! <laughs> Heavens to Betsy! Oh my god! That broke my nose! Yep! Oh, it's broke! Yep! Mm-hmm. <laughs> you walked right into a camera, dude. You're gonna love Rob Ford. The question was raised about the grants and my understanding from staff is that those grants are in which there's no way i am going to sit here and take this nonsense i'm telling you right now oh, okay on, and you I'm not, I'm not, you're not going to continue this meeting until i get through that budget because this snake should be back in his game where he comes from you uh, damn damn Unparliamentary. 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 No, no dude, that would be the per- that would be the perfect <laughs> name for a Rob Ford documentary. Unparliamentary. <laughs> the, the Rob Ford story, because he's literally the definition of an unparliamentary figure. You know, Council, there are rules. There are rules. He doesn't give no, a fuck about your rules. Care. He never rules did. Are ridiculous. He scares me. He scares me. I'm scared. He scares me. Come on. Some bitch is like, he scares me. Who pulled that? No, members of council, let him yell for a minute and blow off his steam, and then we'll go on with our meeting. (laughs) Probably a smart idea. (laughs) I like that guy's way of doing it. All right, he's mad. Let Rob yell again. (laughs) He disrupts the meeting. Rob's not getting enough attention today. Let me please deal with the member that's there without everyone else jumping up and looking as silly as he does. Fine, fine. Now let him just go for a minute. If he doesn't sit down, I'll ask for him to be removed. Order in this council fine, table. let me do that. Without do everyone Shut up, you old biddy. Fine, let me deal with 
Have the security guards remove him. I wanted to hear what Rob Ford screamed. Yeah, why was. don't you shut up, bitch? Yeah, no one cares about your. No fucking one cares about your dumb ass. A fucking boring opinion. All right, what else has Rob got? Is he gonna get hit by a car or something? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, gee whiz of God Almighty! <laughs> he just <laughs> runs. Oh, uh, he just runs. He just books it hella hard, Damn. dude. Anywhere I was going, I was running. That's one way to do no questions, dude. Just run. He sprinted on him. It's the fastest his fat ass he's has ever caddy, moved. Dude, he's got cat-like yeah, fucking speed. I'm busy. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm try uh, I to catch up on my work and, you know, I keep my eyes on the road, but I'm a busy man. You don't see Well... <laughs> I'm busy. I, I I've got to be, you know. Oh, this is him. I don't know what that has to do with the reading or whatever on the road. It's ridiculous questions. What's that sometimes? fucking chin jiggle, dude. I know. I loved it. Double, 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 double. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our boy, Rob Ford. He's well cool. deserved, dude. He was good, but uh, he was good because he was awful. Yeah. He was so bad. He was good. And uh, these Paul guys is. are not so much that as just like bad. So. There you go. Uh, anyway, let me who, go ahead. But who's worse, though, TJ? Who's worse? Well, that's the fucking question I know, we're here to saying. answer. Bush Jr. It? Anyway, so here's uh, some uh, examples of categories. Let me just go through it real quick and explain some shit. Okay. So, of course, uh, the question here is who's worse between Trump and Bush? Uh, the first category is flubs, gaffs, and head scratchers. This is going to be a, uh, a look at some of the lighter Stupidities, like more of like the Rob Forty type of moments that these guys afford us. Right, uh, they're ridiculous nonsense and and funny shit. Uh, so we got debate skills primary. Now you notice there's already a score of a hundred here because I was kind of trying to figure out how do we assess points for the positive categories. So I figured we just start at a hundred and then subtract points from there, and they both start with a hundred points there. Uh, and the same thing with debate skills presidential. Um, cause it's really very, di like a uh, very different kind of debate. So I thought that we could do it separate. Uh, sure. Trump has better, there's better videos of it, re resources available for Trump shit because n there's practically no fucking video of the primaries that George W. Bush competed in. Sure. Yeah. No, uh, no, one I mean, I'm sure it. they're out there. They're but yeah. In the archives of some news organization. Right. Uh, they're hard to find. And certainly no one's clipping them up and doing like George W. Bush's hottest smackdowns from the debates or anything. No, of course not. So, uh, you know, uh, presidential accomplishments. So this is the stuff that these guys actually achieved. So you would think Bush has an edge here because he was in office for eight years. Trump's only, you would think so. Three. So we'll see. So let's say though, um, We'll have to. Uh, we'll probably have to factor that in the fact that uh, Bush, you know, has was did uh, two, two term full president. terms yeah. in office, and uh, Trump has not even completed one yet. Uh, most shameful moment for Got Trump. It. That's the most shameful moment <laughs> so far. Bravest moment. You'll notice bravest is in uh, quotations. quotations. Sure. And then because I know that there's just going to be so much more that's not covered there, I just figured we have a free form discussion where we could talk about things like. You know, whatever you want. The Supreme Court, their cabinet picks, sure. whatever the fuck else. We feel extra points need to be assessed. Yeah, that's, and I'm sh I'm a 100% there's going to be more points to be assessed. Oh, I'm sure. Why so not? I'm sure I figured that we'd ha I figured this is the first time I've felt the need to include a spillover category, but I think it's nece necessary. So uh, let's start off with uh, the uh, the first category, flubs, gaffs, and head scratchers. It sounds like a Jeopardy category to me. Um, anyway... Uh, let's start with uh, Trump on that, and uh, here is some video of uh, Trump having some fun moments. This one, uh, the the gaffe comes pretty early on, but it's a funny one here. Okay. I think what I want to do is I want to talk just for a second. I wrote this out, and it's very close to my heart because I was down there, and I watch our police and our firemen down on 7-Eleven, down at the World Trade Center right after a 7-Eleven? Yeah. Down at seven. Well, you know what? Trump probably was getting a Slurpee. You know, he was fucking a little hungry, got a hot dog or that's a pizza. His, that's his holy American temple, is the 7 Eleven, where the Slurpees yeah. and the candies and the corn dogs reside. Maybe he wanted a big Remember what those terrorists thirsty. did to us back on 7 Eleven. I mean, Trump is a portly man. He, he fucking fatigues easy. He needs a little pick me up. So here is uh, a uh, year in review Donald Trump's craziest quotes in 2017. Okay. No, not you. Not you. 
Your organization's terrible. Your organization's terrible. Let's go. go I'm sure he's referring to CNN. Quiet, quiet. Go ahead. She's, <laughs> she's asking a question. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. No, I'm Don't not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. <laughs> you are fake news. Are mm -hmm. you going to include the Congressional Black Caucus? I love and this. The well, Hispanic I would. Caucus, I tell you what. Do you want to well set up the, the meeting? Do you want to set up the meeting? No, no, no. I, are they I, friends I, I, of I'm yours? Just a no, get a, set up the I meeting. I know some of them, but I'm sure. Let's go set up right a now. meeting. I would love to meet with the Black Caucus. I think it's great. And we had the most. <laughs> I'd love to meet with them. <laughs> Can you set up the meeting? I'll do it right now. You're a black person. You know the Black Caucus, right? Who doesn't? Now, in fairness, she did say she knew some of them, so <laughs> well, well, maybe she could have set up the meeting. This beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen, and President Xi was enjoying it. And I was given the message from the generals that the ships are locked and loaded. Look. He's uh, that, that one, like what? his whole description of the cake and shit. Beautiful yeah. cake. That one's pretty bad. Nobody wants to hear how you set and ate a big old decadent piece of chocolate cake yeah, with, with China. The, yeah, with the fucking with leader Xi, of China. Xi Jinping or whatever <laughs> yeah, the fuck his name is. Let's do some cake. He's a showboat. He's a grandstander. The FBI has been in turmoil. You know that. I know that. And I love all people, rich or poor. But in those particular positions, I just don't want a poor person. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? This is a long time ago. <laughs> Sold his company. <laughs> For a tremendous amount well, of money. Need a poor person. And he went out and bought a big yacht. And he had a very interesting life. I won't go any more than that because you're Boy Scouts, so I'm not going to tell you what he did. Should I tell you? Should I tell you? Oh, you're Boy Scouts, but you know life. You know life. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know life. Uh, That's just weird. That was unusual. Yeah. yeah. Best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. This egregious display of awesome. hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. We will have no choice. So uh, Charlottesville there. Yeah. Right. But to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Now, I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. We are also praying for the people of Puerto Rico. This Puerto Rico. These fucking Puerto Ricans <laughs> having to experience a hurricane. These the selfish fucks, dude. Of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. <laughs> we love Puerto Rico. Puerto. 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 We love the Puerto Rico. We love Puerto Rico. He's got to be in tip top shape. As bad as that hurricane was, and that was a bad one. That was a big water job, right? It kept coming in and going. Yeah, man. <laughs> a lot of water in that the hurricane. Oh, it's amazing. The wa big water. J a lot of water. Remember <laughs> that time he said, and I don't know if it's in either of these compilations. The wettest in the yeah. standpoint of water. Yeah. yeah, it was like the I wettest. I clipped that storm. for ideology. In the standpoint of water. Yep. Right about the we coast have a representative right. in Congress who they say was here a long time ago. They call her Pocahontas. Little rocket man, rocket fuel for the American economy. He is a sick puppy. Whoa. Rock on. He's a sick puppy, huh? Wow. And here's uh, some 2018 stuff. Come on inside, folks. And unfortunately, it has some terrible musical <laughs> accompaniment. <laughs> <laughs> deep, 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 deep. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, Come on great. in. Look at no. his hair. Yeah, that's uh, that's just uh oh. That's horrifying. I don't even want to know what the fuck <laughs> that is. He looks like Darth Vader uh, under that dude, thing. Wear a hat. Oh, oh god, my give god. Him a hat. It's terrible. <laughs> what a nice picture that is. Look at that. I'd love to watch that guy speak. Oh god. That's so awesome. Yeah, don't touch your hair, Sean. No, he saw everything. It's, oh, it's so obvious. Some more bald head happening back Man, there. Man, how those guys are not This time he's going to try to control it. Oh, that did it. Yep. I'll get that little piece Saved of it. Off. Let me get that dandruff off you. All peoples. Thank you. Whoa. Thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. The bro hug. 
I like him a lot. <laughs> Taking a good picture of everybody so we look nice and handsome and thin. Beautiful. Nice and so thin, Trump. Oh, Trump, you're looking so good. <laughs> Kim, too. Badass fucking. <laughs> Kim Jong Un looks fucking smelt there. We're just walking. Oh, look. <laughs> Where did you go? Poor fucking queen. He's, just, he's not sure what to do. This is a tough hurricane. There it is. One of the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint <laughs> of water. We wow. interviewed water recently. This is one of the wettest storms. China water. has what did total you say? respect for Donald Trump and for Donald Trump's very, very large a brain. A brain. A brain. It's a brain. Very, very large a brain. <laughs> a very, very large a brain. A very large brain from the standpoint of brain. <laughs> he had to stop and think <laughs> about what the brain. about what those things that it was wrong. in his head was. And then he brain. got it fucking wrong. What's a brain. Head? A brain. Well, allegedly, Trump has a brain in his head. That hasn't been proven yet. And then we fell in love. Okay. No, really. He wrote me beautiful letters. So so beautiful. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> duty paper, man. He's got toilet paper on. <laughs> no one wants to tell him either. I'm the president. Look at yeah. me. Oops. Is there some duty on the duty paper? Oh, wow. It came off right at the right perfect here. time. Let me give this guy a hug right here. I love this guy right here. I love this guy. Yeah, yeah. Damn, trust better handshakes than you are, though. I know. Well, he was a big business person. So. <laughs> What's Trump doing? Trump's just leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, this is gonna be great, again. dude. Oh, I just I already see. Ah, uh, eh, fuck that. How no. do I close an umbrella? <laughs> There's no way to do it. Just leave it. Raking and cleaning and doing things, and they don't have any problem. I think I understood you better in your language than I That's it. Yeah, I just set that there on the floor. <laughs> you know, you're like, <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Fare thee well. <laughs> like, See ya. All right. It's like Mr. Magoo. <laughs> this guy's just like, uh, how did I get here? Look at the game. Oh, oh yeah. Wrong, oh, old mama. Michelle. Good to see you. And then the fucking <laughs> ice. Hillary is not gonna even look. She didn't in even that look at him. Direction, dude. I remember this. Bill looked at least. Hillary is like, I am looking. It is tails. Okay. <laughs> Let me shake this guy's hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, what do you think of that? Pretty, pretty uh, prone to flubs, gaffs, and head scratchers. I, mean I would say. And that's not all of them either. I mean, there are plenty. No, of, no, of course not. Plenty of them that I can. No, think, I, I don't. We don't have time you know, for that. Of course, this I is just a sample. Trump, Trump has to get at least 20, 25 points for that. I mean, there was quite a few of those. I mean, the wandering now, off stage. I mean, he did that a couple times. Wet from the standpoint of water. I have a very large a brain. A brain. A, a, a brain. I mean, the umbrella, the toilet paper. I mean, the hair stuff, I mean, whatever. He's, he's bald. I mean, a lot of people are bald. So I'm not going to... I would say 20, 20. I mean, a lot of people are bald, but a lot of bald people don't create absurd cocoons on their head of hair <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, yeah. walk around pretending not to be bald, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's what a lot I want. do, though. Like, I won't give him points for being bald, or you know what I mean? I give him points for that weird fucking swami wrap on his head of hair <laughs> that he's gone, created. gone, baldy. And his seeming fucking inability to come to terms with the Maybe you guys could judge better if we saw the Bush ones, too. Well, that's what, that's what so I you guys that, could kind of... We can do that, yeah. yeah. So you guys kind of have a basis of comparison. Because I have right. about the same amount uh, of Bush-isms and Bush quotes and Bush moments. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So we have a kind of like... Well, that's our baseline. So that's Trump. So here we go. That's Trump here. This is Senor Bush. Bush. If you're a single mother with two children which is the toughest job in America as far as I'm concerned. And you're working hard to put food on your family. Those who think <laughs> Whoa. that they can say, we're only going to have a stimulus package, but let's forget tax relief. 
misunderestimate, or excuse me, underestimate. They misunderestimate it. Just making sure you were paying attention. See, you he were. came out of it. Yeah, yeah. He, he, there was a little bit of a, a recovery from At there. At least he realized it's that like, he'd oh, said shit. something yeah, stupid. I, I will say Bush, he had more of that kind of like, hey, 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 I'm an idiot. You know what I mean? But yeah. At least he had, least Trump he had never, that. Trump never has that moment of turning around and being like, oh, actually, what I just said was retarded. Huh? Oops. I'm a moron. <laughs> I'm a fucking dumb twat. You know, don't look at me. <laughs> Doesn't happen. I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. <laughs> the responses... Have got what? To oh, oh, no, no. The wait, human wait. and the fish. Watch, watch as he paints okay. himself into a verbal corner on this one, dude. Right. I love this. Okay. I forgot this responses one. Responses have got to end in order for us to get the, the, the framework, the groundwork, not framework, the groundwork to discuss a framework for peace, to lay the... All right. <laughs> he just realized, like, to he lay the... He just bails. <laughs> He's like, you know what? Because he right. knows that the only, the only word that makes sense there is groundwork, and he doesn't want to say that again. <laughs> So he's like, you know what? It Fuck seems this. Like, I gotta go. It seems like he got caught in a loop where groundwork and framework were the only two words he could really <laughs> decide on we using. We have to have a groundwork to lay the framework. I mean, the framework. To, uh, uh, I'll see you. We gotta lay the groundwork I gotta of go the golfing. framework so that we can lay can the you, framework of the groundwork. Can we watch that one again? Because that one's a particularly yeah, that's a pretty bad flaw. Egregious one. Yeah, take a look. Bing and Sorry. fish can go further back than I need to. The responses have got to end. In order for us to get the, the, the framework, the groundwork, not framework, the groundwork to discuss a framework for peace, to lay the all right. groundwork. <laughs> all right, I gotta go. Anyway, fuck you, gotta go. Man, Enough. you don't see that often. Somebody just bailing entirely on an on a line of thought and just walking away. Yeah, the president's just like, I'm probably just better off After, leaving. Dude, if we transcribed that, it would be utter nonsense. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> we gotta lay the groundwork, or no, the framework. No, the groundwork, no, the not the framework. We gotta lay the groundwork for the framework, so we can lay, get up the framework of peace. Okay. <laughs> All right. I gotta go. Bye. We are not at war with Muslims. Muslims. We don't have a beef with Muslims. We want to be friends with Muslims and Muslim children. Whoa. We're fighting evil people. It's important for the boys and girls of Thurgood Marshall to know. They were fighting evil with good. And one way to fight evil with good is you can help by writing letters to boys and girls your age. <coughs> that was just bad. <coughs> we're fighting bad with good. We are good. We are good guy. We fight bad guy. <laughs> you can write letter. You write letter. Tell other kid Go about write good it. guy. <laughs> Thank you. And so, in my state of the my state of the union, or state my speech to the nation, my 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 my, oh, my no, li listen, my state of the my speech of the state <laughs> to the my listen, my <laughs> my nation speech, my national speech that I made to the nation, my 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 state of the speech that I made to the nation of the national <laughs> national speech of the nation. I don't know, some bullshit like that. What a that. fucking bumbling, stumbling, <laughs> crumbling. Look at him, but he's got a shit-eating grin. He knows he's fucking retarded. I asked Americans to give 4,000 years, 4,000 hours over the next... 4,000 years? Damn, the that's a hell of a commitment. The <laughs> next rest of your life? <laughs> give the... Give, give. God, he dude. recovers out of that... Directly into that mush mouth <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> Holy fuck. Of service to America. That's what I asked. I said, 4,000 hours. Uh, There's an old saying in oh, Tennessee. I know it's in Texas. It's awesome. in Tennessee that says, fool me once. Shame on... <laughs> shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> fool me, we can't get fooled again. <laughs> You fooled me. You can't, you can't. That is one of my favorites, and oh my God. I know it's one of the most memorable yeah, you ones can't too. Get fooled again. But like, to me, watching the process of thought crumble in his head, yes, dude. The best part is not even when he fucks it up so bad. It's when he starts saying it, and then you could tell he realizes, like, oh shit, I don't actually know how this saying goes. Yeah, I really have never understood the saying <laughs> that I'm about to reference, and, then and I don't eyes, even remember what it is. His eyes just go blank, and then he's like, oh shit. Oh, poor guy.
Our enemies are innovative and resourceful, and so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people, and neither do we. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. <laughs> this one, I understand what he was going for. Yeah, sure. I think we all do. Right. He was trying to say that we need, we never stop thinking of ways that they could come at us. You know, we're defensively. Right. But that it's just so ineptly put. Yeah, because it's it totally sounds like. He, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know we're trying to like. fuck with you just as hard as the jihadis are. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> great. Uh, parents are teaching their children right from wrong, and the message oftentimes gets undermined by the pop, popular culture. Pop, pop, the pop, the 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 people. <laughs> The people, 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 the the people, the people, the people, the people, the the people, the people, the people, the people, the the government the people, 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 He's such an expressive person, an expressive speaker. I think that's why people like that, because like even when he fucks up, he kind of has that, like, oh, shit, I fucked up. Whereas Trump just, like, you know, like, he just talks. It's like, and we're going to do the thing with the water, you know, or whatever. And it's like, he just, he's he's unaware. Whereas, like, Bush, it, like, at least seems as intellectually aware he's not a great speaker. Work with the entertainment industry to provide family hour. We can uh, have filters wow. on internets. Where Were you hoping for some? Spent. What was that? What uh, was that weird? Uh, he's just weird. He's socially awkward in a in a way that Trump isn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Trump has this cocksure manner that he uh, say what you want about it. It's cringy as fuck, but he at least it's consistent. You know, and you can tell that like George is really trying to be who he thinks they want George to be. Yes. And it's interfering a lot with his ability to fucking stammer out a fucking sentence, apparently. I don't remember him being this bad. Oh, he was. See, like, absence <laughs> makes the heart grow fonder and all that. And I've forgotten a lot of these. Yeah, well, we got more. Rumors on the uh, internets. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to have a draft. We're not going to have a draft, period. We got an issue in America. Too many good docs are getting out of business. Too many OBGYNs aren't able to practice their their love with women all across this country. Their love. The good love no news is, and it's hard for some to see it now, that out of this chaos is going to come a fantastic Gulf Coast, like it was before. Out of the rubbles of Trent Lott's house, his had lost his entire house, there's going to be a fantastic house. Uh, again, I, I want to thank you all for, and Brownie, you're doing a heck of a job. Heck of a job, Brownie. <laughs> God bless. Uh, full disclosure for anyone who doesn't know, Brownie was not doing. <laughs> Brownie was doing a brownie of a job. <laughs> brownie was doing a fucking. He, he awful pulled job. his pants down and dropped deuce in Central New Orleans and left people there to starve. <laughs> it's America. Thank you, Thank you Awesome speech. Finally, I mean, what? Uh, I don't can't yeah, hate yeah, him for yeah, that. Whatever. That's just that's actually him being like right. genuine. That's just him. Which I think, like, do you ever look back at George W. Bush and think like if he if he hadn't had this impetus to like dress up everything he was doing and try and sound intellectual that he might have been able to communicate better? Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? He just wasn't. He wasn't good at playing the politician, and he probably shouldn't have tried. No, he was more of like a he was more of a people person, you know. And and you know what? He might have been able, maybe the maybe the country's ready for a plain speaking politician. Maybe uh, Trump is an example of that. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how plain. People in Louisiana must know that the, all across our country, there's a lot of prayer. Cool prayer for those whose lives have been turned upside down, and uh, I'm one of them. <laughs> no, <coughs> no, no, no. I understand once again what you're trying to do, but no. I, I think he's. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, only. That is. <laughs> only. Who else look, at that, look, at that, look at that black dude in the middle. <laughs> uh, in the back. Uh, uh, oh, he's. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this dude over here. <laughs> oh man, that's hey, man, a beautiful. Hey, you know what? One. Say what you want about, right. about Bush, man, but the they were the, the fucking uh, teams that won their fucking championship will still come to the. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess we gotta get Bush points for that. He tried to bounce it. He's like, he's, like, right. he's <laughs> like a Marx brother. <laughs> He was the comic relief for the country at a time when we desperately needed to, uh, to laugh at something. <laughs> Whoops. We elected the sad clown to be fucking president. Things I've used on the Google is uh, to pull up maps. The Google. The Google. Maps. For this country. And the people of Bulgaria ought to be proud of, of the achievements that they have achieved. Another yeah. problem is proliferation. There are areas we can work together. And he brought an interesting proposal. He said, I have an idea. Why don't we jointly use a, a radar in Azerbaijan to help deal with a potential threat? Governor, thank you very much. Okay. I am here to make an announcement that this Thursday, ticket counters and airplanes will fly out of Ronald Reagan Airport. <laughs> I don't, okay. Ticket counters. The ticket counters, Whoa, will be the ticket counters are going to fly out of the airport? <laughs> Damn. Fuck me. That <laughs> sounds crazy. That sound yeah, right. I'm not going to the airport on that day. The man had an idea. He didn't like the way the cotton shirts that he wore absorbed, uh, you know, his bodily fluids when he exercised, so he came up with a better product. Bodily fluids? Why couldn't you Whoa. just say sweat? Bodily fluids. Bodily fluids. Bodily fluids. <laughs> bodily fluids. <laughs> And some crabs. <laughs> Look like members of the 1972 Miami Dolphins. Dan Marino and his uh, really dynamic wife. TV stars. Andy Garcia. It's just a fact. I met, I met an onion grower today at the airport when I arrived. And he said, you got to help me find people that will pull onions. Or pluck them or whatever you do with them, you know. Pluck them? Pluck them. <laughs> you don't know how we... <laughs> you don't know how an onion works? You, you, you pull Whatever onion. you do, you know, I don't know, fuck it. I don't know, You're right the first time, you pull them. <laughs> Just seems you like I was here yesterday. Pull them, pluck them, stick them and fuck them. I was. <laughs> kind of. Uh, I think tide turning, I, see, as I remember, I was raised in the desert, but tides kind of turn, it's easy to see a tide turn. Did I say those words? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Yeah, you did. Yeah. It, it, what? Yes, indeed, you did. I don't even know. Excuse dude. me? <laughs> did I say those words? Did I say those words? Uh, what? <laughs> did I say those words? Was that me? Now, that is an epic level of buffoonery there. <laughs> did I just say them words? I just said. Them words just come out of my mouth. Oh, did God. I say them out loud? I gotta hear that again. Tide turning, I, see, as I remember, I was raised in the desert, but tides kind of turn. It's easy to see a tide turn. <sighs> did I say those words? I, yeah. <laughs> it's easy you to did. see a tide turning. I, I, okay. I, I couldn't imagine somebody like Osama bin Laden understanding the joy of Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah think, I guess he probably wouldn't. I don't think he does. I can't either. Me neither, dude. It's an odd thing to point out. <laughs> People say, what do you, how can I Can help? you imagine a, a hardcore Jewish rabbi uh, having a great Ramadan? <laughs> making a what? pilgrimage to the Kaaba and like doing 21 laps around it or whatever the fuck? Uh, no, probably not. Probably not. It's terror. How can I fight evil? You can do so by mentoring a child. By going into a shut-in's house and say, I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> breaking going Paul into a shut-in's house. Dude, someone needs to break into Paul's house and saying "I love you." <laughs> and tell him that. it sounds like a good way to get your fucking ass locked up. Where's the local no, shut-in? Break down the door. Play this I love you. clip, dude. Play this clip. You know what? Going to that shut-in's house. I love you. I love you. I tried to arrest you. Nope, President Bush told me to do it. I'm just following the president's civic advice. Dude, every shut-in in the country was like, please, God, no. <laughs> Don't let this we actually happen. <laughs> we love you, shut-in. <laughs> Like, let me speak for the shut-ins and saying that the last thing we want is somebody we don't know <laughs> kicking our door in and then saying they love us. <laughs> love you, Paul. Just want Go the fuck Paul. Stay away from me. <laughs> Someone kick Paul's one door heart. and tell them they love him. One soul, uh. one conscience at a time because thousands of our fellow citizens are loving a neighbor just like they'd like to be loved themselves. <laughs> well, I bet you they are. Okay. What an odd way of getting a very simple point across. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Because that's that was George W. Bush's way of saying "love thy neighbor as thy as thyself." Yeah, right? like he could have just quoted the Bible on it if if he really wanted. But to. I mean, there's a that's a very simple idea that was just like three paragraphs of jibba jabba, like total like nonsense. Mm-hmm. Oh God, man! I don't God, remember him being this bad. Was he this incoherent always? Yes. Um, not always, but often. I mean, for the, for the most part, I'm. Re- Bush probably making that I saw a couple of speeches where I'm like, that wasn't so bad. But for the most part, it was just shit like this constantly. Sure. America are created by the small business sector and our entrepreneurs are doing well. We got the best workforce in America, in the world. It was not always a given the that the United one. States and America would have a close relationship. In the United States After and America? After 60 years, we were at war. Now, there may be some tough times um, uh, 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 here in America. But this country's gone through tough times before. And we're going to do it again. This is an extraordinary year. When you think about it, in the first month of a new year, there will be an election in, in the Palestinian territory, and there will be an election in Iraq. <laughs> Who could have possibly envisioned an erection, an election in Iraq? <laughs> <laughs> an erection in Iraq. Oh, that, I think there's a lot of erections. Boy, oh, 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 For different aspects of our relationship. A very quick follow-up. Thank you all very much. See you around. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? I was trying to escape. It didn't work. Thank you all. Maybe over here. I'll just hide behind this scenery. Nope. Ridiculous. Oh. What a douchebag. <laughs> and then, of course, there was his uh, shoe moment when uh, some Iraqi citizen threw shoes Well, this shoes isn't in. a gaffe, dude. Yeah, he actually, uh, I didn't know where else to put it, but he does dodge it, and uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, this part actually includes his statement afterwards, so. <laughs> Yeah. So what if the guy threw a shoe at me? No, I consider it a important step in in, in uh, on the road toward an Iraq that can sustain itself, govern itself, and defend itself. But let me talk about the guy throwing the shoe. <laughs> uh, it is one way to gain attention. Uh, it's it's like going to a political rally and having people yell at you. It's like driving down the street and have people not gesturing with all five fingers. No, it's actually it's a like getting a shoe thrown at your head you know, twice. Attention. I don't know what the guy's cause is, but one thing is for certain, he caused you to ask me a question about him. I didn't feel the least bit threatened by it. Uh, these journalists here were very apologetic. They were... You know, they were you know, said this is this doesn't represent the Iraqi people, but that's that's what happens in free societies where people try to draw attention to themselves. And so, I guess he was effective because he caused you to say something about it. Now, in terms of the agreements, <coughs> I don't know if that was the right response there. <coughs> I think you probably should have just moved on and not mentioned the shoot. It guy. is tough now looking at this to see which one of these dudes is more mush-mouthed and more incapable of getting across a simple idea. It's yeah. really tough, honestly. Yeah, I mean, seeing the, like, yeah, I underestimated Bush. Dude. Now, I think that Trump... <coughs> did you misunderestimate him? <laughs> yes. I think that Trump might have an edge in this category, and I'll make my argument for that. Okay. He's only, like, not even one term in, and there's already, like, way more Countless than we pulled, right? Dude. Of yes. him just there's way more of Bush too saying but. stupid, <laughs> incomprehensible nonsense. Now I think that overall, um, Bush was less uh, like more more mush mouthed. Yeah, for sure. But if that's sprinkled throughout a two term presidency, mm-hmm. and like you said, Bush was capable of being you know whatever normal at times. Obviously, this was a. Some of his worst moments. Well, Bush was here. definitely had more of a human, like a like a human quality for a politician. Like, right. He had that like he when he, he was self effacing in a way yeah, that Trump can never yeah, be. He, right. He, he, because he would use humor to, to me. If there's out. anything that mitigates, because I really do, I think Bush actually f- 
outright flubs more than Trump. Yes, for sure. But Trump has a more brutish sort of caveman general vocabulary level. Kind of like a boorish kind of way right. about him. That he's, he's And there's never any aware... After Trump says something stupid, there's never the slightest hint that he knows that he said something stupid. Right. Bush he doesn't at least let on. He smart, might know. Maybe. But it never you never see it. But in his he knows face. that he can't show it because he he has to just defend it. There's no self deprecation in right. Trump whatsoever. Bush was able to be a little bit self effacing with it. Um it's really hard for me to to really measure. I do think that in terms of outright just being a gaff machine, uh, I think Bush has it. But uh once again, you know, there's more self awareness there, and I feel like the general level of Bush's uh, uh, speaking ability was a little higher than Trump's, even if <coughs> it was put upon. You know? I don't know if I'd agree on that last point. I but. would probably rate them. I'd probably, in my opinion, I'd give Bush 20 Rob Fords. I'd probably give Trump 25. I and mean, it was enlightening watching that Bush thing because, I, you know, it's been a long time. I, I lived with the Bush for a long time. So. Right. You love the Bush. But uh, that's, you know, you don't think about it much. And, like, seeing all the examples of it over the years of his presidency. I mean, there were more, too. I can think of ones that weren't there. Oh, yeah, there was. Like, his whole fucking mission accomplished moment should be Uh, on that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it really, when it came to both these guys, it's like, you had to, we had to whittle it down. Because there's just so much. Yeah. And obviously, when you're in the public eye, everyone's going to have that to, to some extent. And So I say maybe a minor edge to Trump just because like he has a theoretical six years or so to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, this would be a, probably a fairer contest after they both left office. But that's not what we're here to do. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give I'm going to go ahead and give I'll go ahead and go along with a slight edge to Trump on that. Yeah, I go with like 25 to Trump and 20 to Bush, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Or should we just do the subtraction scheme for all of these, since there are so many of them? <clears throat> um, well, we really, we really couldn't do the sub, uh, subtraction scheme here because it's, it's a negative category. So this would be adding stuff on. Whereas oh, I see. <laughs> oh, off. got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the So debate because channels. this is a positive thing, <coughs> whatever points they get in here will be subtracted from their already default 100. Um, <clears throat> but... Uh, I feel like this category is a little bit unfair because there's so much more of what Trump did in the primaries than there is of what Bush did in the primaries, uh, just because it's way more recent and it happened during a time when people were cutting up big montages of, you know, Trump, Rex, such and hey, such, man, and this person and that person. Different but times. So, I mean, the- it is what it is, but just uh, <laughs> bear that in mind is all I'm saying. Uh, so anyway, we're going on poison the fucking debate well, skills TJ. in the primaries. Here is uh, Trump versus Cruz in the debates. Looks like Bush here to me, TJ. Yeah, well, I'm Bush. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm it's setting it up. Uh, it's Bush. Trump versus Cruz. I like Donald. He is an amazing entertainer. You, you do? But his policies I guess for most of his thank, life... Thank you very much. I appreciate it. For most of his life, his policies <laughs> have been very, very liberal. For most of his life, he has described himself as very pro-choice, and a, as a supporter of partial birth abortion. Right now, today, as a candidate, he supports federal taxpayer funding for Planned Parenthood. I disagree with him on that. That's a you, matter you of principle, and, I, and I'll tell you. You are the single biggest liar. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. You are the single biggest liar. All right. This guy lied. Let me just tell you. This guy lied about Ben Carson when he took votes away from Ben Carson in Iowa. And he just continues. This guy will say anything. Nasty guy. Now I know why he doesn't have one endorsement from any right. of his colleagues. All right, right. John, I, I get to Senator Cruz, pick from the buffet there. He's a yeah. nasty guy. Uh, pick Donald from the buffet. Has this weird pattern. When you point to his own record, he screams, liar, liar, liar. If you want to go Where did I support watch, it? Where did I support it? Go hey, Ted, watch, where did I support it? If you want to go and watch the video, go to our website, hey, Ted, tedcruz.org. Where did, where did I support it, Ted? Out of Donald's own mouth. When we where did I support it? You supported it when we were battling over defunding Planned Parenthood. You went on That's television a lot of and said nice. Planned Parenthood does wonderful things and we and should not defund it. It does do wonderful things, but not as it relates to abortion. So tell me, what are the wonderful things it does? What are the wonderful things it does? There are wonderful things having What are the wonderful things it does? You see, you and I are Not when it comes to abortion. We're off to kill the fetus, the horrible fetus inside. Hold on, gentlemen. I'm going to turn this car around. John Roberts, Ted Cruz with your brother, 
wanted John Roberts to be in the United States Supreme Court. They both pushed him. He twice approved Obamacare. All right, gentlemen. Good going. Well, my oh, name was good go. My name was mentioned twice. Well, hold on. We're gonna, <laughs> gentlemen. My name was mentioned. Let me, what about Jim? Can I get in this? What my about me? Excuse me, Please clap. Uh, my name was mentioned twice. Can I get it? Can, can, can I get in on no, this? No, Jim. No one cares about you. Get could, out I, here, could I fuck my wife after you're done, sir? Please? Get off the stage, Jim. <laughs> Please, sir. Please, sir, sir. So here is uh, here's exactly what you want. Uh, this is Trump versus Jeb. The, the problem is, I want you. Jeb you'll... looks like a hollow zombie. <laughs> if you think he looks like that now, wait until the pressure starts to mount. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Sweet. Check it out. <laughs> we need toughness. Off him. Honestly, I think Jeb is a very nice person. He's a very nice person, but we need tough people. We need toughness. We need intelligence, and we need tough. Jeb said when they come across the southern border, they come as an act of love. You said in September 30th that ISIS was not a I, I, Am uh, I not talking or are you talking, Jeb? I'm you talking right back. now. I'm talking. You can go back. You're not talking. talking. You interrupted me, September 30th, Are you going to apologize, Jeb? No. Am I allowed to finish? Yeah, one at a time. Excuse go ahead, me. Mr. Am Mr. I allowed to finish? Go ahead, Mr. Trump. So, a little of your again, own I, there, right? I, know, uh, I know governor, you're trying governor to build Bush. up your energy, Please. Jeb, but it's not one, working One at a well. time. Yeah. Look. Okay. So yeah. that um. that doesn't immediately look like it landed, but watch what Jeb does now about that comment of like, I know you're trying to amp up your energy, Jeb, but it's not right. working. Okay. Watch the fucking expression. Look, look, we need a toughness. We need strength. We're not respected as a, you know, as a nation anymore. We don't have that level of respect that we need. And if we don't get it back fast, panic, we're panic, just going to go weaker, weaker, oh, shit, and just oh, shit, He does not know what to do with oh, his body right. at this point. Oh, that's right. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, dude, he's in panic. We but can't you can tell allow like, oh, that shit, to happen. Again. We he's strength. spasming. We he's not <laughs> sure what expression to <laughs> wear. Oh, God. The and it's I saw it. And I was with this You know what? Donald Trump might be a retard, but he can own these fucking idiots all day long. They come across as an act of love. He's saying the same thing right now with radical Islam. And we can't have that in our country. It just won't work. We need strength. Governor Bush. Donald, uh, you're not going to be able to insult your way to the presidency. <laughs> Wrong, Wrong. Wrong. Yes. Wrong. That's not going to happen. And I do have the strength. Woo! I do have the strength. You know what? You know why Donald just did that positive? Leadership. Too, man. What's that? You know the little smile on the eye raise? Because Donald just won again. Because I do. I, I am strong enough. He made a, a political fucking sling. He, he attacked you. And then you just acknowledged it. And basically, in people's You're mind, on the defense, Joe. Yeah. Oh. So Trump is, so no, Trump is right. You are weak. Whatever you had to say is now out the window, and now you're on the defense against everything he just called you out on. Yep. It's not. So the, is see, here's not. the thing. Trump isn't, like, as I understand it, a good standard debater. No, he's not. But he managed to subvert these people to the point where they, like, hung themselves. Well, they like, could, he, they, he, they, they were not prepped for him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't... I don't care what some, uh, what, whatever the standard of debate is. He destroyed these well, guys. Well, the, the thing is, one by one, he picked them up. Remember, off. a lot of these people are like, no, people don't want this. He's going, oh, <coughs> I'm going to do the high road. So that's my thing. To Trump's like, Trump. fuck you. They don't, Trump's like, I'll tell you road. what they he's want. Like, he's like, the low road is the I'm way in to the go. Fuck I'm in you, the idiot. fucking TV business. I know what road these motherfuckers want and me he on. He was right. About attacking people and disparaging people, leadership is about creating a serious strategy to deal with the threat of our time. <laughs> And no. I laid out that strategy Wrong. before Wrong. the attacks uh, in Paris and before the attacks in San Bernardino. And it is the way, that the, of the way forward. We need to increase our military spending. We need to deal with a no-fly zone in Syria, a safe zone. We need to focus on building a military that is second Thank to you. none so that we can destroy <laughs> you, Islamic Jeb, no terrorism. With Jeb's attitude, we will never be great again. That I can tell you. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> ah, done. With that shitty oh, attitude of Jeb. God. No. It's just so, uh, he ain't trying to bring us to greatness. Yeah. He sucks. Oh, let me tell you, with all that shit Jeb just said, we're Garbage. gonna fail. We have no chance. Let and me it, just add that everything my opponent said was trash. I mean, this is like pretty brilliant strategy, though, to bookend everything he says with failure. You know what I mean? To to put an aura of weakness around everything that he says and does. That was the strategy of Donald Trump at this <laughs> debate when yes. it came to Jeb, Jeb Bush, and it worked.
hundred percent. Uh, that why Jeb fucking not only did Jeb lose, but he lost big. He didn't even he made no splash. He was he was reduced I mean, like, like, to begging for claps. I mean, like I think these the base now. Like, like they have the platform everyone stands on, and when you start sucking really bad, you just get dropped into a pool of water, dude. Right. Yeah. You know, and that and at that point, they would have pushed the button. Oh, and Jeb Jeb is gone for the debates, ladies and gentlemen. Jeb was owned so hard. He oh he look he's, there's him swimming out of the pool. Like just make treat like a reality show. That's all this is at this point, anyways. I mean, look, I mean, that's what Donald Trump treated like, and he was elected president. Uh, one more uh, Trump debate, primary stage debate clip. This is him versus uh, Marco Rubio. Real brief one. If he builds the wall the way he built Trump Towers, he'll be using illegal immigrant labor to do it. The oh. second. <laughs> so cute. The... Such such a cute soundbite. But here's the guy. Here's the guy. That buys a house for 179,000. He sells it to a lobbyist who's probably here for 380,000, and then legislation is passed. We're, you tell me about this guy. This is what we're going to have. Here's the guy president. that inherited 200 million dollars. If he hadn't inherited 200 million dollars, you know where Donald no, no, Trump no, would no, be no. right now? No, no, selling no. watches in I Manhattan. Oh, oh, oh. I have to say, Senator he lied Cruz. this time. He lied. 100 percent. 100 percent. You lied about the Polish workers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You lied to the 30, students of Trump University. Ago. 38 Senator years Cruz ago. Oh, he lied 38 please. years ago. All right. I guess there's a statute of limitation on lies. <laughs> there you go. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. At least little Marco put his fucking dukes up and tried to throw yeah, a few punches at least back. There was a, at least there was a battle there. He didn't do this pussy-ass, cuck-ass oh, high oh, road like, oh. listen, I'm not going to go to that level with you. People deserve a serious leader, and I am strong. Yeah, I, I mean that. Uh, you know, who Mark- was it that destroyed Marco? It wasn't Trump, actually. It was whichever one of them pointed out that he was a fucking robot. I think it was Ted Cruz. I think it was Ted Cruz. Yeah, I think Cruz actually took Marco out. <laughs> a sniper shot. <laughs> yeah. This was such a great fucking now, primary. This, de- this, pr- the the Republican primary season for this for the last election. Was the best fucking primary <laughs> ever Every to happen. Debate it was comedic was gold, legendary. dude. It was comedic gold. It really was. Gold, dude. It was really like, <laughs> uh, I don't think we'll ever see its like again, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it oh, was. Oh, the Democratic one's going to be boring as shit. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be, oh my God. It's going to be such a fucking fail train. I am so uh, already done with the fucking Democratic primaries. It's going to be so boring. <laughs> uh, so there is uh, Trump. Uh, let's take a look at Bush, and unfortunately, I can't. Once again, we gotta d- address. There's a sort of a discrepancy here because there's not. I looked everywhere for like Bush's best primary debate moments. It doesn't exist. Right. No one's made that. No and one let's cares be, about that. Let's be frank. Like the reason we just talked about the 2016 primary season, or the, yeah, that that's that's when it was. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Being so fucking great is because usually primaries are utterly forgettable. Right. They're usually boring policy statements that you can hear anywhere else. You know, it's just rote, memorized lines. The reason this one was great is because Donald Trump forced people outside of their prep. Because, like, listen, there's a there's a movie. I don't mean to go too far afield on this. No, go ahead. But I'm kind of interested in presidential debate and in um <clears throat> in particular prep around debate. And there's an HBO movie called, um, oh, fuck, what's it called? Uh, Game Change that covers the uh, previous, you know, presidential primary. It was the primary. Palin movie. Right, the Palin movie with the, you know, uh, so, but it really, it shows the behind the scenes of how they prep people for these debates. And people are prepped very robotically for these debates. Not only do they usually know what the other person is going to be harping on because they've already been harping on it. But they know exactly how they're going to respond to all of it. Donald Trump threw a fucking landmine in the middle of all of that. He did not allow them to come out there and go like, I've already prepared this in the mirror fucking 28,000 times. He, they, they, that wasn't good enough. They had to go off script. That doesn't usually happen in these primaries. And as a result, they're usually utterly fucking forgettable. Yeah. Can you remember another like super? I guess the one that directly preceded it with Palin and um, the the Obama. No, I mean, like, look, uh, throughout my life, there have been some interesting things, but the Obama nothing era, like this. The first, the first time Obama was elected, I remember that primary season being particularly feisty. Well, him and Hillary well. were sniping each other. Oh yeah. You know what usually happens in these things is usually to make it interesting, they let one crackpot on the fucking stage. That's nuts. Right. To make it fucking interesting. And usually the crackpot 
is there for the you know he's there for a little while to liven things up, but then they get rid of him. But the great thing about this was the crackpot was the fucking front runner. Yeah. So you couldn't get rid of him. So every one of them was fucking interesting. And he became the fucking star of the oh, show. Oh, he was way ahead in a lot of these primary polls. Dude. He oh, was yeah. fucking trouncing these fucks. I mean, the only one that even was competing with him was Cruz. Yeah, Cruz somehow. was his biggest competitor. I don't know. Dude, who's the old grandpa guy that's trying to get into the Democratic? Ravel. Pr- Ravel. It, did he get in? I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but I do know that when he, he was in primaries previously, um, he was pretty interesting in those. But like he was this the crackpot. He never went anywhere. No one actually voted for him. He just got he did he got on the stage and he fucking yelled at Hillary and then yeah you're fucking sellouts and no one did anything and they're like ha he's a liar so anyway um so I started him off both at a hundred which is a negative score because you, this the more points you have the wor- the the worse you are right so um anyway um I guess you should probably I guess you probably want to see the uh, yeah, the, the Bush stuff whatever before Bush we, stuff you have before we assess. What, yeah whatever you've got so uh, yeah let's go ahead and do that uh, here is um, I could only, the only thing I could find was the full debate okay all right well so, we can skip around and see how he does I'm gonna skip around and try to find some of the Bush moments now he was uh, considered a front runner at this point so he is in a lot of it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip around a little bit here. More than 30, just now, just we don't call you the best in their own, if, if the so be made let's at see the, how he handles this you know, out of Columbine High School, question. Eric and Dylan came to school every day, and they were giving each other the, I don't know who this asshole is, Nazi salute in the hallway. Nobody yeah. said anything to them. Nobody sent them home. Nobody took them to the principal's office. But if a teacher at Columbine had hung up to Ten Commandments, she would have been in the principal's office the same oh. day. Oh, one of these guys. <laughs> So candy has to start when I'm president. There won't be any more. When you're president, huh? Dude, just look at this guy for a second. Could this guy have ever under any circumstances been president? No. No. Absolutely fucking not. Nazi salutes in the public schools. And it's going to be okay to hang up the Ten Commandments again. Thank you, Mr. Bauer. John. Governor Bush. While you echo the overwhelming majority of Republicans in saying that most education decisions should be made at the state and local level, you would mandate federal testing, cut off federal funds to schools that didn't make the grade, and tie other strings to the federal money that goes to the states. Isn't this very similar to the Clinton administration approach that so many Republicans, including many of your colleagues here, say is the wrong way for the federal government to be involved in education? It's not even close to what President Clinton thinks. I've got a record of reform in the state of Texas, and I'm going to take that to the White House. I believe that if the federal government spends money, say on the poorest of the poor children, we need to ask a simple question. What are the results? What are the results? Are the children learning? And if they are, we ought to give bonuses to schools for the poorest of the poor. But if they're not, if the poorest of the poor remained in trapped schools, that money that would go to the school should go to the parent. So the parent gets to make a different choice. I don't believe in national testing. I believe that local folks ought to develop their own tests and their own standards because I strongly uh, changed, believe in local his control of tune on that. <laughs> no I also believe behind. in charter schools. I believe in education savings accounts to give parents a $5,000 per year contribution to be able to save. I mean, uh... This is just stump speech bullshit. I mean, yeah, you can see, the, and this is really indicative of what most primary debates end up being. It's all just like policy letters you do your stump that have been speech. pre-memorized. You do your stump speech. You get the feeling that a lot of them had these questions beforehand, and in fact, very well may have gotten the questions beforehand so and pre-prepped for them. So let's see if uh, maybe it gets a little more contentious at any point here. Yeah, he's got some heads up stuff here. Oh, is that Mitch? What's that? Is that Mitch McConnell? Uh, maybe. This has been jacking up prices no, by that is, no. production. No, it isn't. No. That means, of course, that oh, that's, consumers um, and farmers... What was his name? I don't remember. He was like a uh, one of these like kind of industrialist guys. He was kind of like a Trump. Oh. He was a hmm. businessman that, that was uh, one of the people that was challenging uh bush this year i remember uh, his fucking fuck, face dude. but i can't remember his name I don't know. Are I'll hurt because prices go up new england's going to have a very expensive winter with heating oil what would you do to get the price down again i would encourage exploration i mean it's a matter of supply and demand 
I would put, uh, I'd keep plans in place that say, uh, to say to our drillers, we want you to continue exploring. I also have got great hope for the natural gas business. The natural gas business is immune to uh, OPEC. So basically, I'm pretty confident that if Trump had gone up against this George W. Bush here, he would destroy him. Uh, yeah. It'd be devastating. It would probably be. He would I mean, he him. actually fucking pwned Bush during the debates. Right. Like, he he brought up 9-11 and used that against Bush's brother. Yeah. So uh, I think that uh, I think Trump would fuck up Bush. So I think you got to give you got to say Trump's a better fucking debater. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't really see a way to look at it. Yeah. I, mean, I don't I don't see a way to fucking. Yeah. So the it's question mil- I mean, he's milk toast. The question is, uh, do you give Trump? Do you take away all hundred of his points or do you hold do you hold him to some points? Well, these are negative points. Right. Well, this is it's a positive score. We're going but it's towards, a, it's towards who's the worst. Right. So, so, ha- so uh, Trump po- doesn't get a zero. I think the right kind of person could really fuck Trump up. Yeah. And I think that, you know, the fact that he probably won't ever face that vibrant of a debate uh, ever again is kind of sad. Because I think if people prepped for him, he could probably get fucked. But when it comes to when he needed to fucking double down and do the debating, he fucked it up pretty good. So I'd say we leave him with like 10 points. That was where I was at. And uh, Bush, I mean, he's, he's just kind of a standard politician in this regard. I mean, yeah, from what I could tell, it's, it was, hard, it's hard to leave too many points for that. Right, because, I mean, that was what was at the time what was going on. I mean, uh, there, it, we didn't have these Jerry Springer-esque kind of primary debates, at least not in the 2000 election season. He right. Was, it was basically just like everyone take turns doing your stump speech and see what America but, I mean, likes. You know, I mean, that's fine. That's all good and well. But we're comparing these two. I mean, with these two, right. I have to say that, you know, maybe give Bush five. Maybe leave him with five. Well, that would make well, that would make be it, better. Oh, that it, that's better. Okay, well, that's, leave him with 25. Yeah, 25 then. Okay. So, yeah, I would say uh, 25. All you right. know, he's he's a standard kind of politician. Standard politician. Can't really typical f- fault bullshit. him for it. Not really great. Nothing spicy on his debate, though. Nothing. You know, at least not that we could find. Uh, okay, presidential so debate. Debate skills presidential. Because obviously the primaries are one thing. You're up there with a bunch of people. But in a presidential debate... For the most part, save for a, a few instances in American history, you're it's you versus one other person because right. we live in this stupid two party system. Sure. So, well, uh, has Trump ever faced one of these? You get two choices. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. With Hillary. Okay, yeah. I got. I, got, I Sh- see what you with mean. With Hillary, dude. Of course. Like the final. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. It's so the I'm final about, debate. Right. Do-do-do-do. So, um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Trump. Uh, his debate with Hillary Clinton. This is a highlight reel. Okay. I believe they had, what, three debates? This is a pro-Trump cut, TJ? Um, I would say it's a... I mean, it's kind of lean, I think, more towards an anti-Trump cut, but it seems like it's pretty neutral and just tries to capture what happened on the evening. Okay, good. Um, you you could tell me if you disagree with that assessment. We'll take right. a look. That well, should be obvious. Hello. Hello. That's the Guardian. So. This is the you Guardian's cut. You that you cut. have sexually assaulted women. Do you understand that? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't think you understood what was said. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women and attacked them viciously, four of them here tonight. He has said... I want to say that um, that was a brilliant move by Trump. Yeah, the stunt really worked. Because it brought to light just a really <laughs> uncomfortable part about the Clinton legacy, which is all the all of these sex uh, assault allegations that yeah, kind of linger the, the around. The blowjob in the White House, right? And the way that Hillary Clinton like fucking went balls out against those women. Yeah, uh, and so I mean, obviously they're trying to make political hay out of the stuff Trump said on his tape, and Trump immediately is like, "Look, I said some fucked up shit." Sure. I didn't know Samuel was there though, dude. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Look at him. I mean, staring daggers <laughs> at Trump too. Samuel Jackson, dude. The, well, the thing about Trump, a lot of people forget, is like, yeah, he might have been one of the most unpopular presidential candidates in history, but number two on that list was Hillary Clinton. Right. So it's like, you know, you really, I mean, the, the favorability of either of these politicians is very low. Yeah, America was kind of like, ew, how is this our choice? 
But Everybody does look kind of disgusted in the her. audience, yeah. like they're about to vomit. The whole audience is kind of just like, I can't believe this. I'm with her. The DJ. audience looks nauseous, dude. Yeah. It looks like the flu is spreading yeah. in this audience. Except I, I can't really see Tom Thumb back there, though. Yeah, I don't know what. He might be smiling. <laughs> He's up to. I don't know. He's that enjoying himself. The video doesn't represent oh, who he is. He has Alzheimer's. He doesn't even know what's going but on. I think it's clear. Yeah, like to I said, anyone. Like, like he's looking around the room. He has no idea what the fuck is going on. Like, are these people talking about something? I feel like I might throw up <laughs> looking at this woman. It, that it represents exactly who he is. I mean, he probably like, he never apologizes ass, he's probably like, oh, for anything maybe. to anyone. He owes our country an apology. And he needs to take responsibility for his actions and his words. But when you talk about apology... I think the one that you should really be apologizing for and the thing that you should be apologizing for are the 33,000 emails that you deleted <laughs> and that you acid washed. And then the two boxes of emails and other things last week that were taken from an office and are now missing. I didn't think I'd say this, but I'm going to say it. And I hate to say it. But if I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation. Because and that's exactly what happened to him. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Oops. Um, yeah, it looks like... I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe that was the, the moment where Hillary is like, I know Robert Mueller, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, I'm going to have to make a call, Donald. Because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. Dude, do you think there that was the moment right there that Russia Gate was born? Yeah. In oh, Hillary's yeah. brain, yes. And that's why she's got a fucking big smile on her face, because she knows what she's going to do already. I mean, at this point, I think that she thinks she's going to win, but some part in the back of her mind is like, Russia Gate. even if you do win, you ain't have hiring no special prosecutor. If anything, there's going to be a special prosecutor investigating your ass. Damn. It's yeah. never been anything like it. It's just not true. And so please you, oh, go. Oh, you didn't delete to, them? You Allow her to respond, please. With personal emails, not oh, official. 33,000? Yeah. Well, we turned over 35,000. So oh, yeah. it was. What about the other 15,000? Uh, please allow her to respond. She didn't. Shut up, Anderson. Why don't you just God, let them Ander fucking uh, have at it, you God, stupid Anderson, fuck. shut the fuck up. Anderson dude, Pooper Scooper sucks. Why her respond? Why her respond? Can someone Shut drag up. Anderson Cooper out of the fucking studio? I don't even understand. Like other like these two, let these two fucking have it out, motherfucker. Yes. No, seriously, he's like white knighting it real hard. Like, Stop. excuse me, sir. I mean, if he's like literally just like talking over and not letting her say a damn thing, that's one thing. But I mean, the fact of the matter is, he's just trying to hold her to the fucking point. She's so. got the ability to fucking respond to him, and why? And she, yeah, and like she can just say she can do the same thing to him during his shit. And I'm sure she did, so... I'm sure she fucking Stop did. Stop you talked. Yes, that's true. I didn't. And because you have I didn't in the say. first debate, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to try not to in this debate. Well, that was stupid. Fuck me, dude. You have, uh, you have nothing to say. I'm not going to interrupt him. It's like, why not? It's obvious that's the fuck... You've got to that you got to play on his fucking level, but the problem is you can't because you're fucking just this scripted robot politician. I'm the savior of America, Hillary Clinton. I'm here. You're right. You're right, Paul, about how he just disrupts their program. Yeah. And I mean, these debates, like, it, it really is weird. They drill them on shit and they have all these pre prepared, fucking memorized responses I mean, I, that are all, all kind of like vaguely harken back to general policy and then they go on a did, policy rant. Well, let me ask you guys a question. We went through the fucking 2016 election. What do you remember about the Hillary campaign? Nothing. She ran one of the fucking worst campaigns in modern well, fucking history. It was all about, history. it was all about, I'm, I'm better the, than Trump. Well, no, it was really all about, I'm the first woman that's ever going to be president. I'm with her. The time to shatter the glass ceiling. There was really like, it was. Oh, yeah. I remember, remember the fucking, the, her, her campaign headquarters they had a glass ceiling. That's I remember too, her too, saber too rattling a lot with fucking Russia, too. She yeah. did. Talking all tough and shit about Russia in a way that, you know, I didn't see any fucking reason for it at the time. So <laughs> maybe a little uncomfortable because uh, I'd like to get to the questions that the people have brought here yeah, tonight know, uh, to talk to us. I about. love the people. Yeah, you want to get back to your pre-prepared scripted fucking answers. OK, okay Donald, I know you're into big diversion tonight. Anything to avoid talking about your campaign and the way it's exploding and the way Republicans are leaving you. The way it's exploding. Yeah. Right? Exploding itself yeah. into the White House, I guess. <laughs> the way Republicans are leaving you. 
No. God, dude. If Wrong. Every, if, if, if anyone but Hillary was in this position, Donald Trump probably would not have been elected. But dude. let's just focus on some of the issues that people Anderson care Cooper about Anderson Cooper is a tonight. fucking no. moron, dude. He is a fucking idiot. You're making Hillary look even fucking weaker than she already is in this position. It's like he's like he thinks he's doing her a favor, but he's actually doing the exact opposite of that. What a fucking fucktard. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just so... I mean, like, part of Trump's narrative is, like, the media is on her side and all this stuff. Right. And when Anderson Cooper constantly feels the need to white knight for Hillary Clinton, it just totally reinforces that. Oh, fully. 100%. It is, uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. <laughs> That's, I mean... Uh, I mean, just toasted. every time, every time, it Donald has a strategy, and he just every time hammers it home, you'd be in fucking jail. Does anyone remember what Hillary just said now? No. No one gives a fuck at that point. <coughs> Nobody remembered you know, it then. You, no, answer the question. Why do you, you still believe... Her? Her? You I do. me all the time. Why don't you Would interrupt you her? Would you please explain whether or not the Muslim ban still stands. It's called extreme vetting. In hours, I, I said that I was sorry about the way I, I um, talked about that because my argument is not with his supporters. It's with him and with the hateful and divisive... Well, then it by necessity is with his supporters. We have a divided nation because people like her, and believe me, she has tremendous hate in her heart. And when she said the plurals, she meant it. Russia has decided that it's all in in Syria. And they've also decided who they want to see become president of the United States, too. And it's not me. I've stood up to Russia. I've taken Hillary? on Putin and others. She talks tough against Russia. But our nuclear program has fallen way behind. And they've gone wild with their nuclear program. Not good. Mr. Trump, let me repeat the question. If you were president, what would you do about Syria and the humanitarian crisis in Aleppo? And I want to remind you what your running mate said. He said, provocations by Russia need to be met with American strength. Okay. He and I haven't spoken, and I disagree. I disagree. You disagree I with your running mate. I think we have to mate. knock out ISIS. <laughs> would either of you <laughs> Trump, name one positive thing? that you respect. I hate this question every time it's ever brought up in a debate. <coughs> yeah, it's like the let's get along guy. I want to hear one thing you respect. I want to hear you say one thing <laughs> nice about your opponent. But dude, bullshit. This you know what? demanding a mud wrestle, dude. It is an interesting question in terms of how politicians choose to handle it. So you tell me who has the better response here between okay. the, the two of them on... What's your favorite thing about your opponent? What's your favorite another? flavor of ice I cream? I respect his children. His children are incredibly able and devoted, and I think that says a lot about Donald. How do you feel about that? Uh, it's, you know, it's a total cunty dodge of a way to not say anything positive about him. Yeah, right. That's basically, yeah. So here's what he says. Uh, I will say this about Hillary. She doesn't quit. She doesn't give up. I respect that. I tell it like it is. But she does fight hard, and she doesn't quit, and she doesn't give up. And I consider that to be a very good trait. Uh, he he oh, way better answer. That was way better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He managed, that was way better because... He managed to actually find something nice to say about the person that didn't undermine anything that he said about her. Because she could be a fucking horrible criminal that doesn't give up. You right. You know what I mean? Exactly. It doesn't undermine any of his attacks. Smart. But Smart. it also rings true because she doesn't give up. Yeah, right. she is obviously I mean, very determined. So she ends up looking like a cunt that couldn't bring he herself to say children. one nice thing about the man sitting across from her, and he ends up looking like the bigger person somehow. Yeah, wow. somehow. I mean, with a raccoon asleep on his <laughs> head. God, you can't make this shit up, dude. <laughs> I'm just How saying. Does Donald fucking Trump. It's like an absurd. Uh, fucking tableau that played out that I still don't fully understand. I don't know how the Democratic Party produce such a failure of a top candidate. I don't know how they allowed her to wrestle that away from the obviously superior candidate in Bernie Sanders at this point. I don't know how they convinced him to bend the knee to her. I don't know how it all fucking went down. I don't, what has she got on everybody else? I don't know, dude. She has to have some kind of fucking info on literally everybody else. Is there like some kind of vampire club this is in the what, Democratic Party or some shit. This is what the fuck happens when you allow your primary process to be 
the anointment of a chosen yeah, one. Well, this is, it was I just totally don't understand. Corrupt, it was a totally corrupt process. It was a right. fucking. It was an unfair process. From the get go, Hillary. W- I mean, they the, there, there, the, the there, DNC basically there was no primary. There, there was, was no, no real primary. primary. There was no primary, dude. Because even in the states that Bernie Sanders won, legitimately won, he didn't win. Hillary. So how was there a fucking primary? There no, wasn't. That, I mean, like it was my fucking fi- the Democratic Party fiat. It was here. You go. Yep, it's Hillary. There That's wasn't it. even a fucking choice. There was like between it was Hillary, Bernie Sanders, and like two other dudes that no one. And even they didn't the even want of. Bernie to run to begin with. They didn't want any of these people running. He Maybe. was the only one that actually dared to fucking challenge her sh- her shit. But it was I that's mean, there bad was no in this way country was, now. There was yeah, and it's now, bad that there was actually in a democracy, as a po- so called democracy or a public, whatever you want to fucking call it, that when we had an election, it wasn't hey, here's this wide array of opinions and voices about all these issues our society is facing, our culture is facing. It's here's Hillary. How is that? A- Where's where's the democratic element of that republic then? Where is it? Like when we have one choice? Yeah, uh, and you'll notice the Democrats are not doing that again this time. They're like, okay, we're gonna run as many fucking people as we possibly can to see what fucking sticks. Because when you just appoint somebody and don't make them go through that process, you end up with someone weak like this who loses to an orange buffoon. Uh, anyway, loses hard. Yeah, and and really sad. Okay, so anyway, here is uh, some highlights of John Kerry and George W. Bush uh, debating who's going to be president in 2004. Now, at this point, Bush has already served his first term. Right. But I thought this was... Uh, it was it's little, appropriate. E- it was a little easier to fu- more f- easy to find this than it was more good stuff about the Gore uh, debate. So That's a shame. Yeah. That was a fiery debate. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, not really too much of that on YouTube. Uh, it seems like one. It seems like politics. Once it's passed, people don't give a shit anymore. Pretty much. Uh, so here's uh, John Kerry versus George W. Bush in 2004. Summary. Same sort of highlight reel. This one from AP. We're friends. We like each other. Totally different tone. I believe in being strong and resolute and determined. And awesome. Wow, those are some great words. Yeah, man. Man, I believe in those words, <laughs> Those too. adjectives that you selected for yourself, magnifique. I believe in eating food, drinking water, and breathing air. I believe in good things and am opposed to bad things. And I will hunt down and kill the terrorists wherever they are. Like, personally? This was like... This was actually, th- that sounds weird, and it is, kind of, but th- that was really important to a lot of people at the time. We're going to get right. the Because this, this was in those This years. was very shortly after <laughs> right. 9-11. I mean, you know, three years sounds like a lot of time, but the country was still real raw <laughs> right? by the time election season so came around. Anybody and they wanted, wanted, yeah. they, they wanted somebody to be like, hey, I'm going to go fucking kill all these terrorists. That was yeah. very important. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so John time. Kerry yep. obviously is he's trying to walk that walk. And what is your platform on killing terrorists? <clears throat> I'm going to kill them all. Got to kill them all, terrorists. But we also have to be smart, Jim. And smart means not diverting your attention from the real war on terror in Afghanistan against Osama bin Laden and taking it off to Iraq. Osama bin Laden was the leader of, it, of there was Afghanistan no to 9/11 itself in Yeah. He was found in like where was he found? Lebanon or some shit? Pakistan. Pakistan. Oops. I believe he was he was near wasn't he near Islamabad? He, dude, he was living in like a three story compound and like he wasn't like he was living in a fucking cave. You always love that. They, they always made an evocative like Osama bin Laden's in uh, some cave somewhere. It's like he was in a city chilling. Oh dude, dude, do you remember the fantasies they used to weave about that cave? That cave was supposed to be like this sophisticated complex of like weapons and troops barracks and like self-sustaining i can't remember the name that they used to have for it but it used to be on the news every night for a while it's like osama bin laden's for uh mountain fortress or whatever the fuck where yeah like he's cobra commander or some yeah. shit. seriously they had like cutaway maps of like different rooms dug into this giant <coughs> mountain meanwhile he was sitting in a fucking uh <laughs> bedroom in um uh, Pakistan, uh, watching Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, jerking he off. He was in a, a badabad. That's that's what I was. Yeah, looking. and he was jerking off to Condoleezza Rice. I think was he obsessed with her? He was. Yeah, that oh, yeah. did come out that he like was. Obs- he had a bunch of like tapes watched, of her, and he was sitting around watching anime. 
Yeah. He's watching like Dragon and, Ball Z and, and there was shit. porn there too. And he's watching yep. porn. Yep. So basically Well, that's like, what they tell us. Yeah. So maybe that could all be They lying. also dumped his body weirdly into the sea right. in the middle of the ocean before yep. anybody could examine it. Yeah. And no pictures of his corpse have ever been released to oh, the public. The, I mean, the US government has all that shit. They just never released well, it. Well, <laughs> I don't know, dude. See, at this point, how do you even trust what went ha- what went down that day? Oh, yeah, does, does that not sound no exactly known. like a country trying to cover up that they didn't actually catch a dude? I mean, I don't. We think, found him. I don't think they would no have pictures. done that unless they knew he was dead. No somehow. bringing his corpse back to the United States. No fucking examination by any doctor. Paul, they they, they tested his DNA. It was him, dude. They said Same. so. It's good. Yeah, they said. They said. They said. They said. They said. They said. <clears throat> Until my eyeballs <clears throat> lay on fucking Osama bin Laden's dead body, which according to the government will never happen because he's at the bottom of the fucking Atlantic somewhere. Or it, well, even the video of him being killed. I mean, because they they, they live streamed the entire operation, right? But not to us, though. Oh no, of course not. No, no, not even a clip of that can be shown to us. Nope. To to like, you see, that's what I'm saying. So this whole like, anyway, we're far afield. Osama bin Laden was still alive at this. <coughs> yeah, point. okay. So we're supposed, yeah, we're supposed to be here assessing uh, fucking uh, George W. Bush's debates because we haven't seen the fucker yet. So Saddam Hussein, and where the reason for going to war was weapons of mass destruction, not the removal of Saddam Hussein. This president has made, I regret to say a colossal error of judgment. And judgment is what we look for in the President of the United States of America. Uh, I was hoping diplomacy would work. I understand the serious consequences of committing our troops into harm's way. It's the hardest decision a president makes. So I went to the United Nations. I didn't need anybody to tell me to go to the United Nations. I decided to go there myself. And I went there hoping that once and for all, the free world would act in concert to get Saddam Hussein to listen to our demands. They passed a resolution that said disclose, disarm, or face serious consequences. I believe when an international body speaks, it must mean what it says. But Saddam Hussein had no intention of disarming. What colossal misjudgments, in your opinion, has President Bush made in these areas? This president just, I don't know if he sees what's really happening on there. But it's getting what? worse by the day. More soldiers killed in June than before. This president, I don't even think he really sees what's happening on that. More in September than in August. <clears throat> and now we see beheadings, and we got weapons of mass destruction crossing the border every single day, and they're blowing people up. And we don't have enough troops there. First of all, what my opponent wants you to forget is that he voted to authorize the use of force and now says it's the wrong war at the wrong time at the wrong place. I don't see how you can lead this country uh, to succeed in Iraq if you say wrong war, wrong time, wrong place. What message does that send our troops? What message does that send our allies? What message does that send the Iraqis? Do specific. <coughs> so kind of <coughs> the same thing I was telling you before where, you know. He's a flip flopper. He's a flip and he's flopping. We're in a much faker era of politics here. I mean, yeah, uh, politicians were allowed to be faker at right. this point in time. Oh, completely. People were not holding... Th- there wasn't this big push for, like, okay, enough of this political shit. We want some authenticity out of these motherfuckers. Right. Like, this is still very much the, okay, you say your script. Uh. Okay, now you say your script. My okay. opponent is a liar. Well, yeah. my opponent is a liar. It's... <clears throat> there's no fire to any there, of this. There's no point in tuning into this. You're not going to learn anything. It's a, This is just two fucking robots sparring. I would say that probably uh, Trump did something dynamic in his debates. Yeah, uh, I would say. I mean, like I'd put like Trump super, at like a, a like, five and put him at the put Trump, uh, Bush at the twenty five again. Yeah, yeah. I think that's about right. Because I mean, I don't know. Maybe he, uh, like you said, against the right opponent, Trump might not shine quite as uh, as well. But goddamn, yeah. Bush he, he <laughs> at least accomplished and really something. bad. Right, uh, and. The only presidential debates we've seen him in was against Hillary Clinton, and she botched it, and he took advantage of almost every weakness that she had. That he was like a fucking shark, dude, the, and the fucking blood was in the water. So the next category is presidential accomplishments. Uh, let me go ahead and get that ready. Um, so obviously, this is another category where we have to look at the giant caveat of Obviously, Trump has been in office for like two and a half, three years now, um, and 
Bush was in office for two terms. Why the fuck didn't you just wait then, TJ? I should have just waited. Just fucking wait a few fucking years, you impatient fuck. <clears throat> but uh, luckily, the Trump administration has uh, been so kind as to publish their accomplishments. Whoa. Oh. On the official White House website. Oh, my God. So. Dude, we are not the minds to dispute these bullshit fucking numbers. Probably not. Uh, almost four million <laughs> jobs created since election. Trump did it. I mean, like, Trump a lot of, done did it. So I would say it's pretty dubious to credit that to Trump. Considering the job numbers were already on the rise when he well, took office, administrations don't create dro- jobs; they just don't do. It. And re- yeah, that, I mean that always has been the Republican refrain too. So I mean, that, that, rightly so. I mean, it, I mean, like you can <coughs> obviously say that he maybe he did, there was a regulation or something he created that. Led I mean, to I more think jobs. the go- I mean the government can definitely create jobs in some sense. I There's mean, you, they can't pass the the, the new jobs bill that says everyone's got to have a job, but you know. They by creating new regulations. Well, that would be communism, TJ. The fuck else. Uh, more Americans are uh, now <laughs> employed than ever recorded before in our history. Also, Not true. Well, even if that's true, it's because more it's more Americans in general. Right. Well, that's. I guess that's also a good point. Which would also make it true that there are more Americans unemployed now than at any point yes, in our history. That, that's <laughs> true as well. We have created more than four hundred thousand manufacturing jobs since my election. Okay. Uh, you also exported about as many. So. Uh, manufacturing jobs growing at the fastest rate in more than three decades. Not sure if that's true, but maybe. I mean, even if it is, like, can <coughs> we? Can he? Sh- like, he's not directly saying how he did that. Yeah, I, I know the last quarter they did uh, his for, existence for GDP growth. I think there was four thousand more so manufacturing jobs. Is, is the many, is though. the idea here that just because Trump's ass sits yes. in the Oval Office chair, this has happened every day that he spends tweeting and golfing? Is a good day for the economy. Well, right? I mean, it, it totally ignores the total innovation of AI and automation that we're experiencing mm-hmm. for these manufacturing jobs. Which are gonna go like away you don't any- understand, TJ. I mean, they're going to go anyway. So, so uh, let's, I'm just trying to get past all the economic stuff because there's nothing here that says how he did any of it. Women's unemployment's down. Youth unemployment's down. Lowest unemployment rate ever recorded for Americans without a high school diploma. Okay. Uh, <laughs> under my administration, veterans' unemployment recently reached its lowest rate <coughs> wow, in 25 TJ. years. Awesome. 3.9 million has been lifted, lifted off, off food man. stamps. Just... Awesome. Like a fucking rocket ship. <laughs> Pew! I'm still trying. St- where do you talk about what you have accomplished as president? Where is anything you've done? Retail sales surged last month. Okay. All because apparently every brand in the universe okay. is using Donald Trump. Finally, there is something he actually did. Okay. okay. He signed the biggest package of tax cuts and reforms in history. After tax cuts, over $300 billion poured back into the U.S. in the first quarter alone. I don't know about the last half of that. I do know the first <coughs> part is true. Yeah, he did he sign signed. That. Yes, he did. that is something you actually did, Trump. You actually did... Pass some tax cuts. And, and as a result, a lot of people... Yeah, I don't know if a net $300 billion poured back into well, the fucking economy. we can economy. say this, though. A lot of people... I've seen a lot of news stories about this, and a lot of people have talked about it. It's how... Uh, with, with the, with basically, in the middle class, especially, the Trump tax cuts were not turned out to be tax cuts at all. <clears throat> a lot of people have uh, seen their taxes go up in the middle class. And also, um, more of them are going to see them go up over the next 10 years. Yeah. But, and and some of those provisions of even that, those that people, even the people in the middle class who did get tax cuts, they're going to expire in ten years. Whereas the tax cuts for the people in the top one percent will well, the continue corporate tax on. Rate and stuff yes, like and per- those will continue on yep. in perpetuity. Well, let's be honest; these corporations they'll pay <clears throat> for taxes anyways. Right. Uh, so that, but but that is something you did. Sure, he did do that. Yes, <laughs> I, w- I won't dispute that. He did do that. And this is him also talking about his tax cuts. Um, tax cuts, tax cuts. Helped win U.S. bid for 2028 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. Did he, did he make a banner or something? What did oh, he my do? God. I don't know. He did it. He helped. <laughs> can, I, can, can we talk real briefly about what a sure. shit show that's going to be? Yes. Can you imagine L.A. and the global fucking center of sports combining? It? It's going to be a fucking snaggletooth nightmare over there. Yes, it Fuck is. Yeah, it is, dude. That's going to be a shit show. That's going to be fun to watch. Uh, opened Anwar and approved Keystone XL and Dakota Access Pipelines. Awesome. Thank you for destroying the universe. Um, Thank you. Record number of regulations eliminated. I mean, hey. uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, 
I feel like it matters more what regulations were eliminated as opposed to just how many, but I could be wrong on that. Enacted regulatory relief for community banks yeah, and yeah, credit yeah. unions. What is the nature of the regulatory relief in the uh, ways where those regulations <clears throat> dropped? Obamacare individual mandate penalty gone. Yes, yep. you destroyed the health care system that existed. Good for you. Very good <laughs> job, sir. And replaced and, and you're attempting to replace it with a last time you tried to replace Obamacare, wasn't your plan pulling at like six fucking percent or some ridiculously low Something number? Something like that, yeah. It was like no one wanted it. Even the Trump ravenous base didn't fucking want his his version of health care. Uh, his administration Ridiculous. is providing uh, more affordable health care options. No, that's bullshit. It's not. Uh, last month, the FDA approved more affordable generic drugs than ever before in history. Uh, why don't you? Well, are we still paying more than every other industrialized country for drugs? Yes. And well, then you didn't not, accomplish shit. And not letting people import drugs from other countries. Yeah, still doing that. Uh, we reformed the Medicare program to stop hospitals from overcharging low-income seniors on their drugs. Uh, well, thank God you're looking out for them, at least. Well, yeah, yeah, look up your voting base, dude. Signed right <laughs> to try legislation. Isn't that like the FDA, <clears throat> like, you can try experimental drugs? Yeah, that's basically saying if you're in a desperate situation and you want to try some experimental shit to save yourself, you can. That's uh, fair enough. I guess I actually kind of agree with that. Uh, secured $6 billion in new funding to fight the opioid epidemic. Yeah, that's going to fix it. The m- throw money at it, it's gone, solved. I wonder how much of that $6 billion yeah. will end up getting spent on yeah, opioids. Let's, let's look at the root causes of the o- opioid epidemic. Uh, $6 billion, you're going to even touch those problems. Uh, we've reduced high-dose opioid prescriptions by 16%. Yet again, that's not the problem. Did you uh, reduce the actual number of opioid overdoses? Because last I checked, you didn't. No, they're up. <clears throat> uh, signed VA Choice Act and VA Accountability Act, expanded VA uh, telehealth services, walk-in clinics, same-day urgent yeah, primary we'll medical health with the universal health care system. Thanks. Uh, whatever. I, that, I guess if, that, if you actually did that, good for you. Increased our coal exports by 60%. That's bad. I don't yeah, like that at let's, all. Let's destroy the planet even faster. Thanks. Uh, no United way. States is a uh, net natural gas exporter for the first time since 1957. <laughs> Yeah, and fracking is doing such wonders for us, too. Uh, withdraw, withdrew the United States from the job-killing Paris Climate Accord. No, you're a twat. Uh, the, the Paris Climate Accord was a fucking half measure that didn't even hold your feet to any sort of fire. It was just kind of like a list of suggestions. Uh, canceled the illegal anti-coal so-called clean power plan. More coal, thanks. Thanks for the coal. Uh, secured record seven hundred billion dollars in military funding. Only Actually, in, more. Only in the mind of a total fucking sociopath <coughs> is that a positive thing. Well, they also have an operational fund for the military, which is not included in the military budget. So we actually spend. People say, "Oh, we spend seven hundred billion dollars a year on the military." It's now we actually spend closer to about one point two trillion dollars. Awesome. More bombs to drop on fucking countries <laughs> that most Americans can't even pronounce the fucking names of. Uh, he's. Process has begun to make the Space Force well, the did, sixth then. branch of the armed force. <laughs> I don't even know if that's an accomplishment. He began the process. He, mm. Oh, wait, wait. He confirmed Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch and nominated... <laughs> what? <coughs> how, did, how did he confirm him? Did, what, that, this is such a disingenuous thing. You know, he had to be approved by the Senate. I mean, whether you think yeah. it's a farce or not, whatever. But are you mean you mean to tell me Trump is taking credit for things he had fucking pretty much nothing to do with? Oh, there's another thing. There's a big <coughs> one. TJ withdrew from the horrible one-sided Iran deal. Yeah, yeah awesome. the tenuous agreement do that. to keep he, Iran from and then went and tried notes. to make the exact same deal with North Korea. Yeah, moved embassy to, uh, to Jerusalem. Awesome. The US embassy. Yep. Yay. I'm so glad we're involved in the that po- the politics of that region. Yeah, I'm glad our dick is in that beehive. Uh, protecting Americans from terror. Oh, yeah, that's great. The travel ban, right? You did the travel ban. Thanks a lot. Uh, issued executive order to keep Guantanamo Bay open. Fuck you. Awesome. Uh, concluded a historic U.S.-Mexico trade deal to replace NAFTA. All right. Uh, reached a breakthrough agreement with the EU. Uh, imposed tariffs on... Why are all of the actual accomplishments you did buried at the bottom yeah, these are all things that he's like actual policy. Yeah, these are seen. actually things that your administration fucking did. You imposed a bunch of tariffs. You passed some terrible tax cuts. You gutted Obamacare, and you did a bunch of stupid symbolic mo- shit yeah. like move the embassy to Jerusalem. The most important thing right now, TJ, though, 
We have begun building the wall. This It's so important it deserved all caps. We have begun building the wall. Republicans want strong borders and no crime. Democrats want open borders, which equals massive crime. Democrats want massive crime, dude. We love... We, I always yeah. knew it. God, I love... Dude, Democrats love crime, dude. I am so in favor of Don't crime. Don't you know? The, dude, the party of crime, clearly. I love crime, you guys. I love it. Okay. So uh, here's a list according to uh, the Times Union of George W. Bush's top five successes and failures. We're only going to look at the successes, I guess. Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll look at both uh, and judge which, which one should apply. Uh, so here's the first. This is, a, this is his first accomplishment. Okay. There were no successful terrorist attacks on the U.S. homeland after 9-11. Th- what? <laughs> <laughs> not That's an accomplishment. a tenuous accomplishment, my right. friend. Right, and also, only if you don't count domestic acts of terrorism, like the DC sniper wasn't a terrorist. Like, I don't know. Seems kind of I iffy. mean, it's saying from the... Aside from the biggest terrorist attack in US history, there were no other terrorist <coughs> attacks. I mean, come on. Yeah. Look, all Aside I'm going to say... Aside from the single biggest intelligence <laughs> failure... In the history of the United States, there wasn't another one. Yeah. All right, look, as, as president of Alderan, I just want to say that after the Death Star destroyed the planet, there was no further instances of the Death Star destroying the planet. Yes, there was relative so, peace, in fact. All, uh, pretty much every social ill we had was solved at that time. Instantaneously. Uh, Bush became just the fourth Republican president in American history to serve two full terms. Hey, that's significant. Um, yeah, you gotta give him that, right? If I mean, like he won re-election where a bunch of other dudes did not. Now, well, some people would argue that he rode nine eleven to re-election, which uh, he very he much definitely did. did. Uh, but you can't take it away from him; he got there. Uh, it says here the president won the biggest tax cut in history, American history. Which well, I guess- actually, some people would argue that he also stole his first election as well. Yes, that he did. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. another dubious accomplishment, perhaps. But uh, I guess uh, now Trump has the biggest tax cut in history, according to Trump. But right. Then again, that's according but to Trump. But you know what, so. dude? I'll say this about the fucking Bush tax cut. You guys remember getting that, what was it, like a $100 check or something? Yeah, there was like a check. Yeah, something like that. I think Everybody got, got like 150 bucks or something. Oh, Paul, you got shorted, dude. I think a lot of people got like 600 bucks, dude. Well, it might have been more than that. I don't remember. It's been so many fucking Get years. you a check for $600. I just remember getting a goddamn check. And going like, oh, this is the Bush tax cut money and going sweet and buying like a PlayStation game. and <laughs> Neat. A controller with it. Bush signed into law the biggest expansion of an entitlement program since the Great Society, the Medicare drug benefit. Uh, the drug benefit divided Republicans in the House of Representatives, but major- uh, House Majority Whip Tom DeLay of Texas twisted enough arms to give Bush a narrow but historic legislative well, it's victory. Just, it's just a giant gift to the pharmaceutical industry. <clears throat> it is. Uh, which it also was Obamacare was, uh, and the well that was well that was for the entire that was industry. the entire medical industry yes. that was a gift for them. Uh, Bush's administration uh, prevented a calamitous meltdown of the U.S. financial. Okay, that's really fucking debatable. Um, I would say they caused it actually. Yeah, this is like crazy. How many <laughs> of these accomplishments are actually like not accomplishments? Uh, so here's what another thing he did. Bush led the nation into war with Iraq on incorrect intelligence reports. We're going to get into that much deeper later. Uh, U.S. economic performance was at its weakest since Herbert Hoover's yeah, presidency. Yeah, the, the economy did fucking suck during uh, his terms. Anti-terrorism tactics employed by Bush, the Bush administration damaged U.S. standing in the world. No doubt about that. Uh, the U.S. government failed to capture bin Laden or secure Afghanistan. Also true. The Republican Party suffered major setbacks in Bush's second term, uh, the, the real effects of which were seen in the next election cycle, which uh, where they roundly lost. Um, here's another article's ideas about what Bush's accomplishments were. and They're a little different, so I thought we'd look at these, too, because Trump had this whole big list. Right. Uh, so uh, here's the first thing they think is an accomplishment. His, his, his speech in Texas... In the Texas House after Bush versus Gore was decided. So this this they, is when the Supreme Court handed the presidency yeah. de facto to him, even after, though all the votes weren't in. And it was correct. later uh, found that Gore would have won uh, yes. the counties and thus the presidency. Yes. Uh, so basically, this is him. That, but they said he made a real pretty speech bringing the country back together. So good for wow. him on that. 
Good job. Uh, so also the Medicare uh, Part D passage, which, as Scotty pointed out, was a massive handout to the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, the president's emergency plan for AIDS relief. Uh, I don't this, remember this, but well, this was this didn't get a whole lot of coverage. But uh, my understanding is that uh, uh, Bush was actually super into uh, fighting AIDS in Africa and did more on that front than you would imagine he would have done. Interesting. Well, uh, a small bright spot. So it said after spending fifteen billion over the first five years, the program was renewed in two thousand eight. A uh, 2009 Stanford University study found that the program saved a million lives in Africa and HIV AIDS rates declined by 10% in countries that received funding. Well, I mean... You can't take that from yeah. me. So uh, this, to me, this was like the one thing I found about doing research about his presidency. It was like, it ought to be up at the nice. top, honestly. Yeah, it should actually be like, this is the one good thing this dumb cocksucker did. <laughs> I mean, he might have presided over the loss of more than a million lives. Yes. Uh, unnecessarily. But at least he saved a million somewhere, <laughs> somewhere else. else. He offset you it, you know. You know, it's the scales you balance. You balance the scales there. So here's the tarp bullshit, which is, once again, just the, uh, the bailout nonsense. Um, the surge. The surge in Iraq. So this was a military... Do you guys remember anything I remember, about the surge? I do yes. remember the surge. So as I remember it, you can correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> the The military effort in Iraq was flagging a lot due to the just like the infrastructural challenges of fighting like a street-to-street war with the insurgency. And a lot of people... Like the, the uh, mood of the country on both sides of the aisle was increasingly, it's time for us to fucking get the fuck out of I mean, it. Well, I mean, Iraq was basically on the verge of fucking right. civil war. And like more and more American soldiers were dying at a time that we were being told by these <coughs> politicians that like, hey, well, we're we wrapping won. this up. We won. So, Mission yeah, accomplished. And, um, and so the surge was a military tactic, like step, like massively increasing the amount of troops on the ground in Iraq to right. stabilize the region. A huge influx of military resources to the region. Mm-hmm. And it did manage to provide a semblance of stability that allowed Iraq yes. to set up its first government, if you want to call it yeah, that. Uh, yeah. Now, obviously, I don't believe we ever should have been in Iraq, and I think it was a huge mistake and a boondoggle. But if you're looking at it from the perspective of the people who are trying to make the Iraq thing work, the surge was effective I mean, in what they intended uh, to do. Yeah, I mean, a, a Band-Aid, because, I mean, obviously, years right. later, we got ISIS. Exactly, but... They, wa- they wanted to stabilize the region with the surge. A lot of people on the left, including myself, said it was not going to work. It did work. There's no arguing it. Nope. It did work. Uh, obviously, long term, it didn't work. As Scotty points out, it led to the rise of ISIS and the, or the Islamic State, whatever you want to call them. Uh, he captured Saddam Hussein. I don't really credit him too much with that. I don't give a fuck. Um, his bullhorn speech at Ground Zero three days after 9-11. So this is something we do have to talk about with Bush. Go ahead. And I guess now's the time. Yeah. I'm telling you guys this. I I remember Bush being a comforting presence in the days and weeks after 9-11. Outside of, like, the fucking war efforts that were being, you know, trumpeted for. <laughs> Just the fact that there was some, like, our leader was, like, standing up with some balls and, like, per, at least trying to convey some of the anger that everybody felt at that time. The mood in my household was very different. <clears throat> like, what was the it? The mood in my household was basically, I can't believe we're going through this disaster with this inept retard as president. Yeah, I see. So that was, uh, that was the, the general consensus among me and my family. We watched Tony Blair do a speech and then Bush do a speech, and we all felt like, man, we wish Tony Blair was our fucking leader. Dude, he was like... Looking see, back on it now, I kind of... Well, watch this in one of these I wouldn't speeches, want either one, but, Let's see. Uh, maybe, right, yeah, let's listen to his bullhorn speech. Maybe, maybe Bush can move you, dude. Yeah, maybe it will. Thank you. Ugh, shut up. Yeah, what is it? I want you all to know... Can't go any louder. I want you all to know that America today, America today, is on bended knee in prayer for the people whose lives were lost here, for the workers who work here, for the families who mourn. This nation stands with the good people of New York City. Don't put the megaphone right in his yeah. fucking I know, ear, dude. dipshit. He, he blew that poor fucking fireman's head off with that. <sighs> You're so dumb. 
Maybe I just have like a like rose tinted glasses. Maybe. I don't know. Let's take a look at some more. Let's see if he says anything. As we mourn the loss of thousands of our citizens. I can hear you. That was good. I can hear you. The rest of the world hears you. And the people... You gotta admit. I'm gonna kick his ass. You gotta beat the ass. You gotta admit there was some there was some element. Dude, it's like a fucking it's like a Whatever. putt putt golf thing where the fucking hole is as wide as the course. I mean, anybody could have nailed that shot. All you gotta do is go out there like America's gonna heal and we're gonna kick their ass. Do you think, do you think Trump could have nailed that shot? Yes. You really think so? I think Trump could have nailed it. I think Without that- self-aggrandizing. Who cares if he does? People are going to be like, oh, I love that he's cocksure. I love that he's full of himself. He's confident. I mean, he's going to kick their 9/11 ass. 9 might have fucking played right into Trump's hand. Is like he's from New York. You know, he, he knows that area and that environment. So he might have actually been able to play the crowd even better. I don't know. I've heard him talk about 9-11, and it's a bumbling, jumbling mess. I mean, it's everything he does is a bumbling, jumbling mess. That's what I mean. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I think anybody... I mean, like, Listen, if you, you have, have to the American examine what just act, happened, yeah. you have to examine what just happened. That uh-huh. wasn't a prepared part of his speech. Right. That was an ad lib from the crowd. Somebody way in the back couldn't hear him, and he turned it into a big moment for these people that were there. Uh-huh. And thus, for everybody in the nation. Well, you know what, you're saying Not that- every fucking president could have done that. You're saying that. How about... <clears throat> here's a more stuffier one below. This is Congress, dude. So there's not much people yelling and shouting. Huh? So there's the one, one below it. Yeah, play the one below it. Let's see. And his uh, address to a joint session of Congress on September 20th. So this is a more scripted one. Or yeah, whatever. so let's sure. see, TJ. All right. I'm gonna, Up, above it's sign. so long. Oh, okay, whatever. All of this was brought upon us in a single day. And night fell on a different world. A world where freedom itself is under attack. Yeah, by you, you fucking prick. Freedom is I can't get over it. Patriot Act. I don't like him. Um, all right. So uh, anyway, uh, that was uh, what category were we doing? Accomplishments. Accomplishments. So uh, accomplishments as president. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I was surprised to hear the AIDS thing, but most of that shit was negative shit spun so, as as a positive. But look, are we going to judge their accomplishments based on our, you know, whatever lefty values? Or are we just going to look at like what they were actually able to do? As president, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, how would we do that? How would we set aside our values to judge them? I'm just asking. To to arrive at a number. I I guess it's to say an accomplishment and not put either a negative or positive connotation on it. Just say what what, what was achieved. Okay, fair enough. I see what you're saying. So just removing all of the politics from it and just saying they did achieve X. Right. Not trying to put any kind of spin (laughs) or context on it. We could look at it like that or we could try to. Or I don't know. I mean, I I don't know if we should or not. I don't know if we should do it that way or we should do it the fucking more partisan way. Well, you're saying Because if we're going to do it the partisan way, I'm just going to leave them both at 100 and be like, fuck them. Maybe I'll move them both down to like... (laughs) 99 or something for whatever good I, shit they might have done. Yeah, Trump gets one, uh, or uh, Bush gets one point taken off I for mean, saving a million AIDS babies. Yeah. That'd be basically how I'd do it if that's the way we're going to do it. And uh, has Trump done anything that you would consider to be good? Hey, dude, um, Bush Bush bought you a fucking PlayStation, too. So, I mean, I, I think he deserves at least, like, You did two say points. that you wanted Bush to, like, shake up the trade deals and shit. Trump, you mean. Or Trump, yeah, Yeah, sorry. and he definitely has done that. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like even the stuff he's done good, he's later backed down out of. Like, I thought it was cool that he wanted to withdraw from Afghanistan, but then it turns out he's not really withdrawing from Afghanistan. Right. I thought it was cool he was opposing NAFTA, but then he goes and signs a bunch of the same provisions. Not NAFTA. Yeah, d- um, diet NAFTA, basically. Not NAFTA, though. Um, um, uh, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, TPP? TPP, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he fights against TPP, but then goes and does a bunch of the same provisions anyway. Of course. Just under a different name. So, like, even the stuff where I kind of like what Trump does, it's like, it, he, he's like, he psychs me. He's like, I'm going to do something good. Oh, cool. Psych. Yeah. So, he's been good at, like, saying some things that I've liked. Like, I right? know he's been pretty soft on, like, marijuana legislation and shit. He said we should just leave it to the states, which is basically him saying, like, it should be legal. 
at this point right. with the rate that states are legalizing it. So, so I liked but, that, but, but you know, nothing's been done on who that Who knows, front. next week, maybe he'll fucking close down every fucking marijuana shop in the U.S. You know, who fucking knows, So man. it's kind of hard to do this one, too, because we got a two-term president versus a, you know, right. just over half one-term president. Right, so you got to factor that in as well. But... I, I I kind of think that we either I, mean, I agree we either have to look at it from that cold logical they did something angle or we just have to let our biases reign right. and give them so both if 100. we're if we're gonna look at it from the cold just they did something angle here's what Trump's done yeah he passed some big tax cuts yes. which obviously Republican base likes yes even though most of them don't even see the fucking benefits I mean, but whatever Bush did too. Uh, he gutted Bush, Obamacare he, Bush, uh, yeah uh, Trump gutted Obamacare by getting rid of the individual mandate stuff. Um, and he did his tariffs, which time will tell how that's going to work out. Not mm-hmm. so great so far, but who knows? Uh, might be a long game kind of thing. Um, and uh, what else did he actually accomplish? Um, that's pretty much it, right? Is there any other big Trump accomplishments? I can't. I can't think of any. Not really. Okay, so Bush, also some big tax cuts, uh, took us to war in Iraq. Uh, and uh, Afghanistan uh, led the country through 9-11. Whatever you want to say about that, it's obviously... Sure, it's an something, accomplishment. Something he did. He held the country together at right. a time when it was coming apart. So uh, we man- He managed to get us through that one way or the other. Um, and uh, what's some other specific legislative shit he did? Um, obviously, both of them did standard Republican shit like deregulations and, you know. Right. Well, Bush actually expanded entitlements, which was really strange for Republicans. Right. To do. So in, in some ways, he did. So the Medicare yeah. Part D thing. Uh, he fought even, voraciously against other types of entitlements. Sure. And uh, then, of course, uh, Trump, uh, Bush did the bailouts, which, uh, you know, uh, that was obviously a response to something that was going on, but he right. did do it. He did. Um, and, uh, you know, the AIDS thing, as much as I like that, it's really not a huge presidential mm-hmm. accomplishment. It's not discussed too much. But the fact that he did focus on that is kind of I mean, nice. he's a, he, you got to give it to him. Yeah, say, sure. if, if it's true that he saved around a million lives, right. with it, you got to... And reduce the rate of AIDS in those right, countries. Right, by 10%. Yeah. So, so that's I mean, good. That's a positive. Um, that's obviously a big thing. But, you know, not really one of the things that's lauded or whatever about it. So him. Um, I think that Bush would probably have more accomplishments, but I think we'd but expect he that longer. he was president longer. Right. So I don't so know. So I think we'd probably just the, go um, with our biased angle on this. Give both of these fucks 100. All right. So how many you want to subtract? Subtract Trump? one. Can you think of any reason to subtract any from Trump? I think. No. I think we got, you know, with, with Bush. I mean, look, he bought you a PlayStation. He saved, like, I think maybe two off. Right. So 98? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's hard to fucking. I mean, Paul, look, you got a PlayStation or an Xbox or something. You got yeah. some games. I, mean, I bought like a Game you Boy had some or something. Enjoy- I don't remember you what had I bought. Some enjoyment. It. Yeah. Thanks to the president. So I bought a bunch of video games or something. <laughs> All right. Now a we TV, don't, maybe. Now, thankfully, we don't have to deal with any more of that. Subtraction that is what I bought. Shit. I What'd bought a buy? giant fucking, like, right at the death of CRT, I went and bought a giant CRT TV with that fucking money. Oh, Damn, okay. That's I remember cool. it. That's so you're just they, like, oh, it's so cheap now. Might as well get yep. a huge one. Thank you, Mr. Bush. I got like dude. a big fucking like, I can't even remember what it was. Some absurdly huge for a CRT. Right. I brought it home. Wow. It must have been really heavy, too, because those those CRT big screens dude, were fucking It was enormous. a two-man job getting it yeah. in there. I think people I don't remember what happened to that People forget TV. how big those fucking were. Uh, those The big screen ones. Cause I, remember I my, wish I still had that. My dad had though. a big screen CRT. You can't find them now. And it was, yeah, I mean, it was like a fucking, like, it, it was a monster. If it was in this room, it could crush you yeah, legitimately. It, it'd be like the size of one of these tables. If, it, if you were basically. laying on the like ground, in terms of width. If you were laying on the ground and it teetered off the table and fell on you, it would legitimately kill you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like, yeah, or at least seriously, it's like an fuck engine you block. Up. You'd be fucked up. Yeah. Uh, you'd be fucked up or dead. Um. Anyway, hopefully dead. Yeah, uh, it'd smash you. But anyway, yeah, I got anyway, one of those off a of bush, so you got to take a couple points off of him. I did, took him down to 98. Okay, fair enough. And uh, Wait, can anyone think of any reason why Trump should get any points off? No. I can't. I no. can't either. All right, so uh, now it's time for their most shameful moments. Oh, no. Bum, 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 bum. Most shameful moment. And actually, in both of these cases, it's really more than just a moment. Sure. We got to cover some multi- multiples, right? Multiple uh, shameful moments. So let's go ahead and start with uh, Trump first, as we've been doing. Okay. Um, and uh, to me, and maybe you guys will disagree, but I wrote the episode, so it's up to me, motherfuckers. Fuck you. I disagree. Fuck you. I dis a fucking agree. Nope. Object. I'm gonna Object. stand up 
And I'm not going to be quiet until I get my way. Oh, he's channeling Rob Ford. Oh, no. They want to shut me up in here. Oh, shut me up, TJ. I'm no. sorry. I'm sorry. We're not doing the episode this way. Ah, uh, I'm scared. All right, so. We're changing the episode. So, uh, anyway, the thing I thought that he did with the worst was uh, his vetoing of the uh, the Yemen um, legislation that would have stopped us uh, supporting the Saudi genocide in Yemen. So, anyway, here is uh, the war in Yemen explained in three minutes. Now, I should point out that this is from um, Al Jazeera, which is uh, funded by the Qatari government. So there wow, is some TJ, potential bias. Wow, TJ, what a fucking great news coverage. source. Uh-oh. The world's largest what about Russia today, crisis TJ? isn't How about a story from them? I actually like Russia today as well. Oh, okay, great. It's in Yemen. Fucking fascist Thousands piece of shit. Thousands have been killed and millions have been displaced put it up on so the far. For us, the conflict Sorry. has been going on for years, but it became especially violent in March. Well, it's hard to fucking focus when you got some retard tapping on your shoulder over and over again. What? Son of a What are you bitch. talking about, dude? That's when the Saudi-led coalition got involved. Now, the poorest country in the Arab region has become the violent playground for regional and international powers. Nah. So, how did it all start? After the Arab Spring toppled dictators across the Middle East, Yemenis won a change too. Their president, Ali Abdullah Saleh, was forced to hand over power to this guy. His deputy, Abid Rabbo Mansour Hedi, in November 2011. Sounds like even Muslims have trouble saying Muslim names. His yeah. name is Abdul Hadi. But the political transition to Hadi failed. There was massive unemployment, food insecurity, suicide bombings, and a separatist movement in the south. All that ended up sparking the war. On the one side, you had the Houthis, a political Shia rebel group, and people loyal to former President Saleh. On the other side, you had forces loyal to the new Hedi government. In 2014, Houthi forces took over Yemen's capital, Sana'a. Early the next year, the Houthis and Saleh loyalists tried to take control of the entire country, forcing Hedi to flee to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia considered the Houthi actions an immediate threat and feared this could be an opportunity for Iran to gain a foothold on their border. Saudi Arabia accuses Iran of backing the rebels, but Tehran denies any involvement. Probably falsely denies them I'm involvement. Sure. So On what so fucking grounds do you besmirch the Iranis, TJ? <laughs> I just I just know how these sort of geopolitical situations When work. has a mullah ever lied to you? Um, huh? Never, now that I think about it. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. Good point. All right, so uh, the typical, it's your typical fucked up Middle East situation. This group right. hates this group, and this group hates this group. So uh, the Senate, uh, followed by the House, both passed resolutions to end the U.S. support of Saudis' uh, support of the Yemeni uh, genocide. Uh, a genocide... Uh, war, TJ, the war. Oh, I'm sorry, war. Um, a genocide that's mostly, uh, by the way, happening in, um, in terms of uh, uh, starvation. Because uh, you know right. we see all the violent images here. I'll show you uh, some some pictures from the uh, the fucking war that's going on. This is an emaciated uh, little kid, right? Seven, and I mean, this is this old. is always Dying of starvation. This here. is always the biggest casualty of any war, though. Right? See, we didn't get this laser focus on Iraq, but this same fucking shit was happening in Iraq. Oh, we're gonna do Iraq it next. So uh, Iraq is coming. Uh, here's another starving kid. Yeah, it looks normal. What are you talking about? Here's, uh, this is, um, I don't even know. This trying is a to... guy with his kid buried there. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. On that, under that rock there is uh, his, his four-year-old who starved to death. Uh, here's another starving kid. Basically, there's a lot of fucking starving kids. Right. Here's a happy picture. Uh, now, this is, uh, our tax dollars are going to help make this happen. Uh, and so a lot of people in our government, uh, led by Bernie Sanders and some others, in a bipartisan effort, were able to pass resolutions to put a stop to this. And Trump, for only the second time in his presidency, decided to veto that resolution. So let's take a oh, look at that. Oh, what a surprise. For the second time during his mandate at the White House, Donald Trump has wielded his power of veto. This time to block a resolution which aimed to end U.S. military assistance to the Saudi coalition fighting Iran-backed rebels in Yemen. The president said the congressional text would harm U.S. foreign policy as well as Washington's bilateral relationships. This resolution is an unnecessary, dangerous attempt to weaken my constitutional authorities. 
endangering the lives of American citizens and brave service members both today and in the future. Total bullshit. How? So basically, uh, I... This resolution is uh, interfering with my ability to suck Saudi Arabia's no. big, fat Muslim dick. You want dick. to fight an unconstitutional war, and for once when Congress does something right, which is a check on the executive branch and presidential power... Which is supposed to exist. Which is supposed well. to yeah. exist. Constitutionally, it's supposed to exist. You veto it, which is also your check on their, on their power. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to work, Donald, you fucking moron, you simpleton. There's kids starving... Because of these goddamn terrible policies, in the, not only in Saudi Arabia, but the U.S. to back those policies, to let people starve to death, to let genocide happen. I mean, like, it, I mean, uh, are we the same nation, the same country that freed these people from concentration camps? And now it's like, what are we doing? I don't think we are. No. Uh, Trump's uh, also. I mean, Trump's entire relationship with Saudi Arabia is fucked up. Oh, it's all about money, dude. It's, look how many billions of dollars the Saudis are buying from the from U.S. industries, uh, I, we, from the defense industry, from Boeing, from these other companies. It's a joke. So, uh, the Iran sanctions that Trump supports uh, primarily benefit Saudi Arabia. <sighs> what? We sell billions of dollars in weapons to Saudi Arabia. It recently came out that Rick Perry, that retard who couldn't remember which department of the government uh, he wanted to get one. rid of, uh, who decided that wearing glasses would make him look smarter? Uh, <laughs> that guy, that guy, got caught uh, on the behalf of the Trump administration giving uh, nuclear technology secrets to Saudi Arabia, <sighs> and uh, nothing has come of that. That's not even a controversy. He was in, it, that was something they wanted him to do. So uh, while we're pretending that it, the, if Iran, uh, if we make, if we sign a nuclear deal with Iran, they're going to start building secret weapons. Meanwhile. We're funneling nuclear secrets to Saudi Arabia and giving them weapons. Oh, and just remember a few years ago, and doing the- sanctions on their behalf against their enemies. Uh, so we're just so fucking in bed with Saudi Arabia at this point, and that's why this resolution actually. Oh, failed. but remember, under the Obama administration, we had frigid rela- a relationship with Saudi Arabia, the world's oh, largest yes. exporter of oil. Yeah, of yes. course uh, we did. The Obama administration still sold them billions of dollars stood up in arms to Saudi Arabia. Missiles. No, uh, this is not a Trump thing. I, 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 when I say it's his most shameful moment, it's just shameful that even when called on it. He still stood by the the fucking Saudi oh, regime. Oh, it's the troops and the American people but, are going to uh, be safe. Yeah, uh, this is not. He's not. The the blood is not only on his. Hey, hands Paul. Here. You know when they they starve uh, those kids and they bomb them and all that shit. We're, they're actually protecting our freedom. Don't Hillary, you feel safer? Hillary Clinton. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, if Hillary Clinton was in office right now, she'd be taking the same position. Um, Obama took the same position. Um, if, you know, we've been Bush definitely took the same position. Bush and the Saudis were fucking tight. Let me hold their hands. Uh, all of our, all well, of our they presidents. Were an, they were angels. In, they were angel investors. Have loved the Saudis. Remember that? I mean, you saw the fucking Fahrenheit. I love it. They were angel investors in some of his oil fields. Mm-hmm. They have close, close ties even before he was president or even involved in politics. So there's uh, Trump's most shameful moment. Of course, uh, Bush's most shameful moment is leading us to war in a, in a by, you know, with a lie. Let's take a look at that. Uh, this is once again from Al Jazeera. Looking back, Colin Powell remembers this day as a painful blot on his career. He gave the UN Security Council a detailed account of Saddam Hussein's supposed weapons of mass destruction. Ladies and gentlemen, these are sophisticated facilities. He said the Iraqis had built a mobile biological weapons program. They had to be stopped. For example, they can produce anthrax and botulinum toxin. This is the CIA running wild. Their imagination's running wild and saying, how can we justify the president's bullshit war in this foreign policy that makes no sense? Yep. Because these facilities where they show these trucks loading these weapons of mass destruction, there was a wall there. It's bullshit. All this is made up. It's a blot on his record because he got up and he lied. He knew there was no way any of this was true. He's a lying sack of shit. And whenever people go, I respect him. Well, if you respected him, you should have done it up until this point where you threw his dignity away and the truth away in the pursuit of a fucking meaningless war, which, which, which the only result was a bunch of fucking profiteers getting rich and a bunch of fucking people who had no business being fucking killed, killed. And then sectarian violence and then the rise of ISIS, which is now another problem we're dealing with. Another fucking bit of blowback. Oh, we'll be dealing, dude. We'll be dealing with the Iraqi problem for fucking generations. Of course. Like our involvement there is going to be necessary for generations to come, and it was a lot of it. A lot of because, like at this time, people were skeptical. The Afghanistan war had borne no no fruit, 
in fact, the only fruit that it had borne were the dead bodies of soldiers that were coming and home. And still ongoing. And increasing numbers. And here comes the government going, oh, let's go to a simultaneous war in Iraq. There, there was a lot of skepticism on both sides of the aisle. And I cannot underscore how this helped to push uh, the national conversation in terms of war. Having a man that everybody respected at the time sit in front of them and tell them that the Iraqis were coming up with weird bombs that they could fly over here on drones underneath our radar and bomb New York. Oh, dude, he went was, into all that shit there, there in this was, fucking there was, talk. There was protocols about how when we have anthrax attacks, how we're going to survive them and how like, really, like how to do drills in schools and shit. Dude. I mean, it, it went so The mass deep. information age hadn't started properly at this point. And so the narrative was very much controlled at the top. And when a, a government official with this much respect sat down and told you that Iraqis were planning on fucking bombing New York with anthrax, dude, it, you, can, you better believe it swayed a bunch of people. Yeah, and tipped the balance of the American uh, populace towards a war that, like Scotty said, is fucking totally meaningless. So let's take a look at some of the results of that war. Now, this uh, this is only talking about the, the economic official cost. war from 2003 okay, sure. to 2011, which cost 1.06 uh, trillion. Yeah, the dollars, official war. Uh, th- this number is which probably a vast way underestimate. Under- because look, we a mis a misestimation. We're back in Iraq right now, of course. Uh, we left. We kind of left for a little while. Now we're back. We're spending more money there. I'm, I mean, I hate, I hate to fucking say it. The I war mean, is, according to this, has added one trillion to the debt. It's probably more than that. Sure. This is probably an underestimation. It's probably way more than. I that. mean, like, I, I hate to say this though, and I mean, it, it, it's such a cliche now, but I mean, it really does does feel like a 1984 fucking scenario where it's just we have endless these endless wars with these countries. I mean, we don't really know how the war and like look. If you, all you have to do, this, if you want to see how these wars are actually prosecuted, if you want to look at these people and better these with these reporters and shit, that's not how the wars happen. Let me tell you what, like, well, and you got to talk about, about Afghanistan. P- think about the PMCs there. Of course. I mean, think about the fact that if you look at WikiLeaks, they just kill these people. There's all this like, oh, there's, there's these procedures and stuff. I remember I would talk to people and they say, oh, they have these procedures and they have to do this. I'm like, no, they don't. So that's bullshit. They're feeding the, well, you. You're talking about contractors and shit? Not only the contractors, the U.S. military itself, they wasted a lot of people. They just kill people. Oh, they, yeah. got, they got in their way. They're, oh, they're in front of the convoy? You're a, you're a terrorist. You're attacking the convoy. Die. The, oh. there, there's kind of a striking thing that I like to think about when we talk about Afghanistan and Iraq. Every war that was ever prosecuted in American history had a beginning, a middle, and an end up until that day. Mm-hmm. And now we live... Now, what is it? Almost all, like a, we're going into a second generation that was born at war yes. and will probably die at war. Yes, we've just g- seeded the idea of peacetime completely. We're now we've we, we're now constantly at war with at least one country, multiple countries. Now, it's it's absurd the cultural impact that this war had beyond the fucking trillion dollar debt that it racked up. Right, which well, is probably this way more. One factor uh, also here is a factor of uh, soldiers killed. From 2003 to 2018. Um, now you see here the kind of the drawdown period. Um, but, you know, uh, I mean, this is thousands even, of lives lost. This is American troops. This yeah, isn't ki- contractors. This is killed in action. But here's the thing, too, is what about the massive number of casualties? There's so many people that had uh, traumatic brain limbs, injuries, yeah. limbs blown off. I mean, like, they're just those, the people who suffered those numbers uh, from are in the PTSD tens of thousands, and yep. shit like that as those well. Those numbers are in the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. Right. And, uh, of course, the, but the the loss of uh, American soldiers there is nothing compared to the amount no, of... Pulled it. Which yeah. is another Deaths. number that you're going to find very fucking different uh, numbers on. Because, like, a lot of these... Oh yeah. Don't account for fucking like I've heard I've heard accounts being well over a million in yes, terms of I've heard, I've heard up to 2 million. Here's right. a casualty estimates range from 151,000 violent deaths as of June uh, 2006 to uh 461,000 total deaths as of June 2011 uh per PLOS medicine. Uh, over 60% of the latter being violent. Other estimates, which are disputed in the scientific community, such as the 2006 Lancet study and the 2007 Opinion Research Business Orb Survey, put the number as high as uh, 655,000 total deaths as of June 2006. Over 90% of them violent uh, and 1.2 million violent deaths as of August 2007, respectively. Body counts, which underestimate mortality, 
uh, counted at least 110,600 violent deaths as of April 2009, according to the Associated Press. Well, the Iraq Body Count Project documents um, 183,249 to 205,785 violent civilian deaths through February 2019. So those are documented. Like We 100% know these people were killed. Uh, yeah. And, I mean, that's astonishing. And these numbers, of course, only focus on Iraq. But the Iraq War destabilized the entire region. Right. We're not focusing so we're on not, what it I, doesn't it creating ISIS and how many right. people ISIS killed. It doesn't it's take not into account on the any of the that, domino effect. Right. The people that died as a result of the actions in Iraq. It, it, the numbers immense. It's in, in the, like the, literally you can't calculate it. There's no way. Yeah. There's no. There's, there's um, too many variables. And uh, of course, aside from it's you know one thing to look at the numbers. I also uh, like to look at like pictures. Uh, so we kind of have a in our imagination. Well, the infrastructure, the a different sort of, of cities. We yeah. didn't have to imagine a lot of this, right? A lot time. of this was televised, but these are some of the most. Uh, th- this is some fifteen year later. Oh, yeah, sort of photos. There's probably ones with the tracer rounds just going off, and then just. So do you remember in the, the early city. parts of this? One of the ways this that the, they. This is part of shock and awe here. Yeah, one of the ways that they they sold the war was this shock and awe campaign. The idea behind which was to blow up so much shit in one night or a one week of bombing, basically. The the Daenerys strategy. Right. <laughs> and and that's literally what they did. I mean, they were do and, and you can look at this city and if it wasn't smoldering, it would be uh pretty fucking like you would think you if somebody told you it was in Greece or in Europe somewhere, or even in America somewhere, you'd probably go, Oh, okay, where? Yeah. What river is this on? It was like a fully functioning <laughs> city that just became rubble before our eyes. And I don't know how much of that shit you guys watched live, but it was fucking insane to watch. I was there. I was watching. Um, I wasn't there, obviously. Damn, you were TJ. on the ground? I was not. I was there watching TJ TV. here live from Baghdad. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, President Bush addressing the nation from the Oval Office. Yeah. Um, which, who gives a fuck about him? Um, here is an Army uh, Staff Sergeant... Of Math, uh, Robert Dominguez of Mathis, Texas. He's uh, standing guard next to a burning oil well. Got to make sure nobody comes and burns the burning yeah. oil well. Don't burn it no more. Uh, here's a U.S. Navy hospital corpsman uh, assigned to the 1st Marine Division holding, holding an Iraqi child in central Iraq in uh, March 29th, 2003. A uh, confused frontline crossfire ripped apart an Iraqi family after local soldiers appeared to force civilians towards positions. Yeah, ripped apart in what way? Where, where's the rest of the family? Yeah, uh, probably dead. Dead. Oh, what? Uh, I would guess. A fire burns outside the United Nations headquarters in Baghdad. Obviously not too great. Uh, here's the top, famous toppling yeah. of yeah. the statue. I remember this shit. Another thing that happened live. Um. Let's see. What is this? Uh, here they are playing baseball in, uh, I guess, Saddam's palace. Damn. That's kind of fun. Uh, here's uh, some dude with a bag on his head. It's a dera- detained Iraqi man with a plastic <laughs> deranged bag. Deranged Iraqi man. Deranged. Detained Iraqi man. Is that man. the sandwich autist? Yeah. That's, this is, oh, uh, this is the sandwich autist uh, inspiration. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess he was held by soldiers that night or whatever. This image may contain graphic or objectionable content. I don't know. Uh, uh, we're on YouTube, so yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess it shows naked detainees with bags placed over their head. Oh, this is the human pyramid photo, right? Yeah, of, at Abu Ghraib. Yeah, you can go find that if you, you want to find look that at it. pretty easily. Um, here's some looks terif- like a looks like a still from a horror film. Yes, yeah, but this actually shows- this is terrified Iraqi kids protecting themselves from the cold after they uh, they're taken outside of their house during a pre-dawn raid in the suburb of uh, Bakwaba, Bakuba. Here's Saddam. Not looking, having a good hair day. Looking pretty fucked up. Damn. He's pretty high. What do you mean? I think he's looking pretty good. Here's some uh, dudes on fire. You know, uh, this is British Army troops covered in flames from uh, petrol bombs thrown during uh, with, thrown by violent protests by job seekers who say they were promised employment in the security services. So uh, they're like, you promised us security jobs and you didn't deliver, so we're going to set you on fire. Damn. Um, here's some some of our troops making the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, do you remember at some point they stopped publicizing they, yeah, those Yeah, they stopped pictures? showing it because it was sentiment yeah. was turning against it. Uh, here is a, a soldier wounded, uh, I don't know, maybe dead. Getting, getting dragged out by his buddies, it looks like. Um, yeah, being, uh, he was fatally, fatally wounded. They're trying to pull him to safety. Uh, but obviously there's no safety from a fatal gunshot wound. 
Uh, here's a young Iraqi girl crying after a mortar shell, which landed outside the family's home, uh, injured her uncle. So oh, yeah. there she is in uh, the throes of grief while some... <laughs> blood literally running in yes. the gutters. Uh, here's uh, some... Yeah, just a giant fucking Ugh. blood puddle. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. An Iraqi man is held against a Humvee by a U.S. Marine after being searched during snap vehicle checks on... Uh, so this is basically the Iraqi citizens being subjected to, uh, you know... Right. Gestapo tactics. Yes. Uh, here's some anti-war protests that immediately stopped all that stuff yep. you see going on above you. No war. Hey, I held up a peace sign. I don't know. I held up a sign and nothing Choose changed. Choose love, humility, not war. Yeah. So there was massive protests against this war, um, and uh, none of it really did shit. Um, nope. Here's uh, oh God, Saddam so. Hussein arguing in court. Look, his hair's looking better. Yeah, they, give him yeah, they, clean, they let him camp. clean it up. Yeah, they let him look a little more respectable there. Uh, here's just a giant fucking explosion. <laughs> it's a giant fireball. Yeah. Uh, here's a, a U.S. soldier displays a picture of a dead of dead Al Qaeda leader Abu Musab Al Zarqawi uh, during a news conference in 2006. In the green zone, dude. The safe zone. Here's a bunch of people with their hands zip tied mm. behind their backs, hog tied like farm animals by yeah. the side of the road. Uh, they were arrested during a raid in a village near Bakuba, northeast of Baghdad. Some suspected insurgents. Uh, mm. Here's some of the soldiers that did not die, but... Uh, just got burned to <laughs> shit. Yeah, just lost limbs and burned up and stuff, you know. Good stuff. Uh, here's uh, Saddam getting his just desserts. Oh, yeah. This yeah, was, was all great. Sa- it was all Saddam, dude. Yep. Because Saddam was the real. Well, you know, you, you notice how it immediately cleared up over there as soon as they. Dude, hung as this soon guy. as it was great, because as soon as Saddam was dead, all the stuff that you saw above it all just came to Poof. a fucking halt. Halt. Yeah, everything was fine. Everything was turned beautiful. out that he was the source of all the evil. Um, <laughs> U.S. Army soldiers fight a blaze, which started after a mortar round fired by insurgents ignited a fuel truck at their operating base. So that's not a great situation to find yourself in. Are they throwing bottled water at it? Uh, I guess that makes sense. I don't know if they're throwing yeah. it at it. That's what Maybe. it looks like. Yeah. That looks like they're throwing bottled water at I it. Mean, I guess that's the best you could do. you got to improvise, right? Yeah. Uh, a girl is searched by a female soldier from Alpha Company, 2nd Battalion, uh, 7th Infantry. So just more Gestapo shit. Uh, here's a um, woman uh, mourning her slain uh, fiancé. And uh, here's another objectionable image. Let's see what that is. A grieving woman takes her dead six-year-old son in her arms. Uh, he was killed when their family came under fire. So that's a dead kid there right, under course. that. Uh, here's a woman accosting Condoleezza Rice with uh, blood on her hands. And Condi, she, look, dude, taking Con- it in stride. Yeah, Condi's just like, whatever, bitch. She's not, she doesn't care. She don't give a fuck. She has to look at her own hands every night, and they're anyway, way bloodier. Anyway, uh, I could show you more, but uh, it just goes on and on. I mean, yeah. Uh, you could go down the rabbit hole of depressing images yeah. from this war. <laughs> look at this. Look, the, look at this. If there's more any human takeaway, suffering, more death, more human suffering. If there's more any takeaway, the Iraq War was bad. That's what you can yeah. take away from that. All the way around. Uh, not for a everybody. good. Not a good time for the soldiers. Unless we're like, e- like war mainly sucks. Unless we're talking like the emu war or some bullshit like that. Like the chocolate war. Like who could eat more chocolate? The oh, chocolate okay. war. So uh, I anyway, want that war here. Uh, so for their most shameful moment. Uh, Trump's Yemen, the the uh, Yemen shit, allowing a genocide to start versus starting a genocide. I think this one's pretty easy I mean, to call for me. Trump didn't yeah. start. I mean, Trump didn't uh, even allow the genocide he to start. Allowing, uh, sorry, allowing it, it to, to continue. continue. Right. So I say I don't know. Give him what thirty points for that. Did yeah. Bush started. And the what about Bush? A hundred. Yeah, you got. I mean, if 50, 100, 70, I'd say a hundred. A hundred easily, dude. Yeah, I mean, I mean, because we're still we're gonna be shoveling shit on that. For fucking generations. And because I'm sure you guys need a little levity, uh, let's take a look at uh, the bravest moments of these two. Sweet. So let's take a look at uh, first. Well, I can't let Sky. All right. Sky is walking out of the room. So uh, he's got Sky's got a judge, too. So I can't fucking I can't proceed. I can't proceed. Wow. You're hamstrung. I'm hamstrung by his absence. Hamstrung. Strung by the hams, sir. I did not know this episode was going to be this long. (laughs) It's getting pretty long. Yeah. Uh, it's also not a feel-good episode. DJ. Oh, it's a feel-great episode, Paul. 
I really especially liked the pictures of the blistered skin on the legs, or what used to be the legs of the hey, Iraqi six-year-old. That pre- was president ain't a uh, pretty fucking position, Paul. That's true. It's, it's really not, not all sunshine and roses. I, it's not, and I mean, like, I, if we're gonna be honest about the impact of these men, we gotta look at their fucking atrocities, dude. I can't just whitewash that shit and be like, oh, it was all just funny, goofy. <laughs> he said the wrong word. Right. It's not all that. Unfortunately, I wish that was all it could be. But uh, no. But like I said, here there's there is some levity on the way if Scotty's ass will ever get back fucking in here. <laughs> all right, you can have some fun with this. Uh, this is fuck, TJ. Well, you need to be around to judge the shit, you dumb fuck. I'm anyway. judging. I'm judging everything, dude. Anyway, so here we go. Here's Trump uh, in his proudest moment. Damn. That eagle does not like Trump, dude. dude. If, I, if we ever need a fucking omen that Trump was bad for this country, there the it is. of our country is like, <laughs> dude. The get eagle's the name was Uncle me. Sam. Yes, Uncle Sam was not putting up with this shit, dude. There is a bald eagle named Uncle Sam, and every time it gets near Trump, it freaks the fuck out. Yeah, it tries to kill him. Does it, it do like, it for anyone else? Doesn't seem to do it with its handler. Does not like Trump. <laughs> Trump's a little bit. I actually think it's just reaching. I think it saw its little ring move and was like, "Ooh." I don't know. It looks like it was telling him to get the fuck back. Okay. He wasn't he, he really was. scared. Yeah. Dude, he clearly was. I mean, not really. Not really, though. I was just pretending to be scared. I just thought it would be fun to pretend to pretend to be I'm scared. I'm probably of the bird. able to fuck Trump up, dude. I mean. It's ra- I mean, like, it's perfectly rational to be scared of the fucking bird. It has giant talons and shit. A brain. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I wish Trump's uh, bravest moment was wasn't another chilling reminder of a dark chapter of American history. But God damn it! This is Trump uh, upon hearing that the country's under attack on. Uh, this is Trump. Not eleven. I mean, it's Bush. Whatever. They're the same. So I don't think he's been told yet. Maybe he has. Get ready to My pet, go. The fast way. Get ready. Yes. Sound it out. Get ready. Sound it out. Get ready. What word? Yes. Get. Boys I think he's boys actually boys told boys during boys this. Boys Somebody yeah, comes I in and whispers it in his ear. Point, there yeah, it right is, there. right here. So here is the Open moment. Trump, uh, sorry, Bush is told the country's under attack. The country's under attack. 9-11, bad. Bad stuff's happening. I see. Thought you should know. Well, better sit here. So at this point, Trump should be standing up and Bush. saying, Bush. I, I, sorry. I spread- God damn you guys, this is Bush. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so hard to say any other political name other than Trump now. Trump. At this point, Bush should be standing up and saying, excuse me, I have to go. Sorry, kids. And ducking the fuck out. I think the comments but you can see how much longer this them. video goes. Like, All right, look at so it. right now we are at uh, how many minutes into this? I don't know. I don't. Uh, we're about a minute and a half in. Yeah. Let's skip to two minutes. Still there. Yeah. Still thinking about it. Two and a half minutes. Still there. Okay, this is bad. Three minutes. Keep still there. Three Keep and a half minutes. Keep in mind, you know, decisions need to be made here. Lives are at stake and all that shit. Yep. You can't see him, but he's still he's there. He's like reading the fucking book. Still there. He's still there. Still there. Still reading the book. Still, still there. there. Still there. Still there. Still fucking there. That's exactly right. Now he's going to take questions. Very impressive. Thank you also very much for showing me your reading skills. I bet they practice too, don't you? Oh, yes. That's a yeah, make small talk. Oh yeah, there's time for this. Yes, put up the way. Uh, uh, Mr. President, the fucking New York is burning. Yeah, uh, I don't understand. I mean, like, he's literally been told like there's a ter- been a terrorist attack against our country. He's like, okay, well, first I'm gonna sit here and listen. We need to, this. to read the yeah. book. My pet Not goat. great instincts. Well, we gotta read My Pet Goat, dude. It's a really I mean, good like, book. He probably really was looking forward to the ending of the story, so he just couldn't. He couldn't get up. 
And making small talk afterwards, too. Like, oh, they're such good readers. Yeah. That is so good. Thank you for showing me your good reading. You all are very smart. Like, I don't know, man. I, mean, I understand that you got to fucking inspire the kids yeah, to read Yeah, there's a time to that, sit but... and fucking mug for the cameras and listen to kids read, and there's a time to get up and do shit. All right, so for their bravest moment, uh, you know, Trump, uh, obviously, whatever. You know, it's just a little cute eagle video. He gets, what, five? Yeah, give him five points for dodging the eagle like a uh, pussy. As far as uh, Bush goes, uh, I mean, it's pretty lame. Um, I mean, but ten. I wouldn't want to... Like, we're talking about one moment. This is not a huge category, obviously. I'd give him probably ten or fifteen. What yeah, let's think? give him fifteen. He's Damn, 15. Paul, Paul's fucking... All right. That was dumb. Lay it on the hot sauce. All dumb. right, so... Uh, spicy. Now, uh, when I added this freeform assessment section, I thought that uh, I didn't know this episode was going to have reached two and a half hours already, but... Yeah, I kind of feel like we did that during the episode pretty well. I don't know that this last category needs to be assessed. If, but if there's anything that either of you have to say about Trump or Bush that we did not assess points for yet that you think points should be assessed for... Um, I was thinking maybe, um, I mean, they both, I think uh, Bush had a worse cabinet. Uh, I mean, I just think about Dick Cheney in the process, Rumsfeld in the process. More, uh, a more stable cabinet, though, you could say. Yeah, they were more stable, give them that. Um, although Rumsfeld did eventually get fired. Um, I mean, we really about, should be roasting Cheney here. Yeah, Cheney definitely. For a lot of this shit. Uh, and uh, who else was there? Uh, not, not Aside from Cheney, um, uh, Ashcroft. Oh, oh yeah. John At Ashcroft. The eagle sword. That guy was a piece of shit. <laughs> Covered that s- statue's titty and all that weird shit. God, he did. yeah. Bush, Bush really uh, surrounded himself with some reprehensible. Another thing too. that Bush did that we didn't talk about is the faith-based uh, initiatives and shit, where he would give money to cre- he basically funnel That's money true. to Christian organizations. Oh, has has uh, Trump discontinued those? Um, I think Obama kind of discontinued some of them or weakened it at least. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I, I think I, I'm not sure what Trump has done. I'm pretty sure Trump has mm. probably done it because it's popular with the Republican base, uh, but I don't know for sure. But I know uh, Bush really pushed those uh, forward. So he de- that's definitely something you could lay at his feet. Uh, well, one as well. thing we didn't fucking, you know, we didn't really talk about with Trump, dude. Trump is a fat motherfucker, too. Yeah, he is fat. I, mean, I know we've discussed on the show before, so I don't think we have to really rehash all of it. But I mean, Bush looks like, I, I know he was a jogger. I know he was a fucking, he was yeah. in better shape. He kept I mean, in good shape. I mean, Trump is, I mean, kind of gets a failing grade as president for health and shit. I mean, he fucking eats a lot of fast food. I mean, I think that. How many Rob Ford? Bill Clinton was uh, a fat fuck, too, though. That's yeah. true. He was. Yeah, but we're not Ford. comparing those two. I understand. So I have to say, I, I want to give Trump a list I mean, of I think more Trump, points. I'd give Trump positive. I'd, give, I'd take away points for his fatness. Oh, of course you would, TJ. Uh, I mean, Bad good, empathy. Because you can't fucking exercise. You can't eat healthy. So you have you to know? fucking denigrate those that do. I understand. Right. Dude, Rob Ford. You're would've. the one denigrating. I fucking I, I think it should be a neutral topic. His uh, what I think about it is what would Rob do? Well, Rob would sit there being an even fatter. Well, fuck Rob would Trump. be eating That's a hot. True. So Rob would be eating a hot dog, <laughs> doing like what? He would eat a fucking big old chili dog with Trump. Yes, he would. Uh, in a heartbeat. But uh, yeah, those are some things on Bush that I didn't think you, we were assessed. So between his cabinet and uh, his faith-based initiatives, and uh, I mean the revolving door of Trump's camp, uh, you know, administration. Yeah, the instability of Trump's uh, administration might be something that you could assess points for. I mean, plagued by constant scandal. I mean, I mean, that, that, I mean, that was par for the course politically. But Obama it seemed to have lo- uh, less scandals than Trump. Right. For certain. Uh, Trump's always admits. I mean, like, and then we got to talk about the, you know, the Mueller investigation, too. There was that going on and his potential obstruction of just justice there and stuff like I mean, that. Basically, his obstruction of justice, but the fact that he's president, he just gets away with. It. Right. Yeah. Uh, so there's that, that, that stuff. That old chestnut, you know. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. It's it, there's uh, would you, maybe 30 more points apiece just for shit we probably missed. Probably. I think that's fair because I can't see one of them. I'm fine with it. Really shiny. It's basically leaving it at zero at that point. Right. But I don't know. I feel like some points should be assessed just for like... Damn, so I think Bush comes out... General stupidity. Well, let us let me go ahead and uh, tabulate the results while you guys I'm, vamp uh... and distract. We have to time Trump's uh, fucking number by like four. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and then we have to yell at the sky. Then we have to go and yell at the sky because we're so yeah. upset that Trump is president. No. 
Because Trump is going to, you know, if he gets reelected, he will continue to be inept for an indeterminate number of years into the yeah. future. And we have to account for that. Well, you know what? As long as Trump survives that, and until then, I'll be $1,000 richer. So what does it matter to me? All right. So if my math is correct, Trump has scored 205 points. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wonderful. And I'm just tabulating so that... Oh, dude, I don't think... I think Bush has got this. He's got one category. We had 100 points. 100 fucking That's points. That's true. I mean, he deserved it, though. He's a I piece mean, of fucking so. garbage. I mean, rightly so. I mean, he's... He was a horrible president. I mean, of course, he just looked through... It's rose-colored glasses. Let's be honest. That's all it is with Bush, is that he's not in power anymore. He doesn't really matter to the political landscape. Yeah. He was just goofier. And, you know? and he's had a few little clapbacks to, to fucking Trump. He said some shit like Trump's a bad president. He, I mean, he might have said oh, directly, but I, in a roundabout way. I'm going to give him any points for jumping ship. He was a piece no, of shit. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like that's why people are, have been favorable. Because, I mean, just coming out against Trump now just gets you points automatically. Um. Okay, so that means Trump got 205, 303, uh, 257, 307. Do you want me to do the calculations for you, TJ? No. Sure, man. TJ's having trouble. Curve the one of the hypotenuse of the triangle. Uh, so the I'm circumference of the I, circle. If I did the uh, math let's right. Find pi. Let's find the angle of If that. I did the math right, this final score is Trump 205 to Bush 322. Oh, a fucking route, dude. But if you want to sit here and uh, re, re-examine the numbers, no, make sure I got it I, right. I just prefer to be, you to be correct in the comments. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it, I mean it's uh, it's a little <laughs> surprising that Bush won so hard handily, but I had forgotten a lot of his atrocities. That was kind of the reason I wanted to do this episode because I feel like Bush is getting way too much of a fucking pass these days for the piece of shit he was. Yeah, I mean a lot of the stuff that we're dealing with to this day is fallout from the fucking Bush years, completely, especially agree. the perpetual war bullshit. I mean, like remember the category where Bush really pulls ahead and wins this motherfucker is just the fact it's the Iraq war that really fucking pushed him monstrously way ahead. Right. Because as of yet, and give him time as of yet, Trump hasn't dragged us into yet another one of these fucking quagmire wars that cost you know, trillions of dollars and hundreds, uh, hundreds and thousands. If you don't like the geopolitical policy now, TJ, just wait. Exactly. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, appreciate it. Um, and uh, if you guys have any uh, anything you want to say, say it in the comment section. If you enjoy the episode, give it a thumbs up. If you want to watch uh, Friday's episode, be sure to become patrons. And we have a special offer where uh, for every 50 patrons that join this month, we're going to do another serving of content, be that another movie commentary or another show or whatever the fuck. That's true. But we're always trying to find ways to please our look, patrons, so there's no reason not to Last Friday's episode was about a subject near and dear to many of our audience. Yes. Autism. And you yep. can check out that. We got, a tra- we got a preview for that on the channel, and you can watch the full thing by becoming a patron, just like you can watch all the private shows we've ever done if you become a patron. So There you go. All good. Check it out. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you later.